Hello everyone. Welcome to Tabletop Anthologies. We are uh, we're glad to have you with us tonight as we uh, we do a special um, fifth edition Dungeons and Dragons one shot with uh, a familiar face and uh, some some new people. Um, my name is Preacher. I'll be your uh, dungeon master tonight. And uh, as uh, we get into this, we'll let uh, each character uh, introduce themselves and the character they'll be playing. First off, we start off in a town. It's a quaint town of Vistula. It is a, uh, a town set in Faerun. And the, the party members have come at seemingly the, uh, the right time. There is a, uh, an annual ball has commenced in honor of the, uh, the wizard's victory over the Siege of Goblins. Um, as you guys had, had made your way in, you find yourself walking through cobblestone paths. You see, um, you see simple, um, simple uh, shops on either side. Nothing too extravagant, nothing too um, out of the way. But it's, it's a beautiful little town, almost, almost homely, kind of cottage style. Um, and as you made your way in, you find your way to a, um, a tavern with the, uh, the words inscribed, The Silvery Barb, at its, at its head. As you are, um, as you are making your, uh, your, your way in, you notice that the, the barkeep, he is an elven man, he's about six foot tall, he has a very wide smile, and, uh, as he walks in, he just says, have a seat anywhere. You can uh, you can have anything you like. Uh, and as you take your seat, um, Zuzo, introduce yourself first. Well, well, yes, yes. My name, my uh, name, Zuzo. Zuzo. I am a small, small cobalt, cobalt, red, red cobalt, cobalt, a monk, a monk of, of cripple, of cripple my, my god, my god. I've been, I've sent, been here sent here to, to maintain, maintain order, order in in. Maintain, maintain any, any revenge that, that Kirtle Mac, Mac may, may suffer, suffer upon gnomes. gnomes. But until but then, then, I remain, I remain with, my with my party and help them and out help however, they however they need. As I do, as that, I do I that, I go up to the bar and I look at the barkeep and I say, One black briar mead, please. A mead, you say? Ah, I'll have it right away. You're lucky. They're only five copper these days for the, the annual ball. Five copper? The annual ball? I'll have to get more information. Please, comrades, come hither. And as uh, as Zuzo uh, waves you guys in, um, you see uh, two more individuals step in. The first being uh, Daedra. Introduce yourself. I'm Daedra, I am a tiefling bard, and I am hoping that finally, at this festival, I find bagpipes fans. My art has not been very welcomed in this land so far. And Rhea, introduce yourself, please. I'm a wood elf ring. Um have a look. Um, I helping people in my local village uh, with travel and things of that nature. Um, also really big escaping. Um, I are in order to drink. Alrighty, so as you uh, as you guys are, are sitting down, uh, you get your um, you get your 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 meat and, and and all of your your drinks. You see a a waitress walks by, or a waiter, I should say. Uh, also, uh, um, a tiefling male, um, and he walks by and he says, "Our our special is 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 stew and lamb. Would you like to have stew and lamb? It's it's only." T T t ten, t t t and he looks down. Uh, five, five. Uh, sorry, first day. It's today, Junior. It's se seven copper. Se seven copper a bowl. As he finally spurts it out. Well, yes. that took you a while. 
Yeah, I, I'm I'm sorry. It's it's my it's my first day. I I I don't normally do this. I uh, I work in the blacksmith shop, but it's it's kind of been slow lately, so I've had to pick up a second job. I'm sorry. I can uh, help you with diction and projection. <laughs> oh, I would love that so much. Thank you. Uh, um, for now though, can I can, for a bowl of soup? Can, uh, for a bowl of soup. A bowl of soup for all of you? And he, he starts scribbling. And, uh, uh, no, no soup for me. I'm working on my figure. Thank you. No soup for lizard man. Got it. <clears throat> I'll, have, I'll have his. So make it three. Scratches out. Two soups, but not for a lizard man. <clears throat> and he, he, he rushes off. I'll, I'll have that away uh, immediately. Thank you. And he scurries Bar off. Bar keep. So, what seems to be going on in this uh, town, this large uh, festival, I assume? Oh, yes, yes. This this festival, uh, it, it marks the uh, the annual uh, victory of the the victory over the goblins. We, we were sieged by goblins some years back. We had a wizard uh, in a tower not far from here. He... Um, he single-handedly, with the with the help of of some friends, and he kind of like makes this face as he says, "Friends," uh, saved us from from being sieged by by oh. goblins. Uh, so now, he definitely ten years didn't ago. do it single-handedly. Then he had friends. W one could say that. Yes. Yes. Um, okay. His friends your, your were. Your story has holes in it. His friends were were odd, odd, and then he just kind of trails off, almost seemingly like not understanding what's going on. Well, as you can see, me and my party members here, we are an adventuring group. We just got off of a job. Um, so we're, we're looking for some more work, if, uh, if you have any. Oh, I'm sure you can find something around here somewhere. There's always somebody needing something done. And he, he, he kind of like, looks down and he, he picks up his glass and he's, he's wiping it down um is there is there anything else that i that i can do for you nothing from me how about you two i look towards my party members and so uh he uh he's he saunders off and and goes back behind the bar and a little time later, you actually kind of hear a little bit of a a, a a crunch and a kerfuffle as as you see this man clumsily coming out with these three bowls of soup, like trying to balance them, even though it's just three simple bowls. And he's he's almost like he's on a unicycle. He's just bobbing and trying to dodge dodge heads. And finally, he gets to you. And, and just before he gets to the to the table, he um he seems to to like almost slip, catch himself, and land the bowl perfectly in in front of. Uh, Veron, um, and he just kind of he kind of sits down. And he says, "Who? Hey, everything okay? Looks to be fine with me." Uh, While he's and your your meat, and he reaches around and and grabs like this little um, he grabs like a, a a pitcher off the next table, pours you a tankard full, and and sits it down. Good. And I am not going to drink the meat, but I will keep it in my hand. Um, real quick, smelling this meat, does it seem pretty, pretty potent? Does it seem pretty alcoholic? So you would, um, it just based on, on your sense of smell, you're, you would realize that it is, it is very concentrated. I mean, it's, it's, it, you, you slosh it around in the glass and it's, it's kind of thick. Like, the bottom of yeah, the like the, the honey okay. is kind of set into it. You know, it's, you can tell so that they've it's... been scraping out of the same barrel all day. And, and okay. Yeah. So this is a, this is a pretty, this is like, this is like a 140 proof, right? Oh, this so like yeah. So like you're sitting there, you're looking at it and you're like, this is kind of thick, but at the same time, it's, it's just runny enough. So that tells me that the honey is starting to separate from the alcohol and this one's, it's, it's going to be ripe for sure. Okay, good. I'm not going to drink it, but I will keep it in my hand. Okay. Um, while we're sitting here, would I be would I be able to look around and see what's going on in this uh, in this bar? Is there anything else, anything that catches my eye? Uh, absolutely. Roll me a perception check. Yes, for sure. Uh, actually, all of you can roll me a perception check if you'd like. All right. Let's see if I can do that. Yeah, I got seven. It's a lucky number. No right. 
I don't know. Uh, also, I don't know if uh, it was supposed to. Uh, but I think the music stopped. Did the music stop? Yeah. Let's see there if we, we can fix that. Twenty-one on man. Oh, nice! You see, you see everything. <laughs> Is the music back? Yep. Yep. It's back. Okay. Cool. So, um. Uh, as you're looking around, you notice that there are um, there are a bunch of different people from seemingly uh, all different types. You see you see gnomes uh, interacting with elves. You see uh, half orcs well, interacting. Yeah, you see half orcs half orcs interacting with uh, dragonborn. It just seems like everybody has congregated to this area to be uh, a part of this celebration. Um, and and as you're uh, you're sitting around, you notice um, specifically. Uh, Daedra, you notice that, that it seems like there's a group of people over in the corner and they're starting to pull out instruments. They're starting to pull out lutes and, and drums and, and little things and they're, they're actually starting to, to, to play um, and, and form some sort of like a little bit of a, um, a entertainment in the corner. I will grab my bagpipes <laughs> and I um, would like a uh, and uh, start um, starting to tune my bypass <laughs> with them. <laughs> so, so you you saunter over there with them. Oh, oh yeah, and I'm gonna start tuning my bypass. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> roll, roll me a performance check. All right. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> it was almost good, but nah. so as still as you it, as you as you yeah. as you walk up, you hear them you you, you hear them playing um, kind of a familiar tune to you. You can't place it, but you know you understand the basic um, note structure. So as you walk up, you you kind of almost tune your bagpipe to to kind of fit the music. So at first, it's kind of like, ha, 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 and then eventually you just fall in, and it and it sounds uh, uh, like it like it was meant to be there. Uh, it takes you a minute to kind of fall into it, but you eventually, you know, kind of start tapping your foot, and you you begin to to add to the jovial nature that is the aroma of this place. Uh, Rhea, as you are sitting there with your perception, you start to hear what is um, almost a faint clopping, uh, like almost like hooves on stone. Um, it's very faint to you, and you actually almost hear like a, a commotion outside. It's very, very faint, just, just, just slightly. Nothing out of the ordinary right now, but um, you can hear that there is something going on outside, kind of. I kind of want to go see what that is. <laughs> so, Daedra, as you're, you're playing your bagpipes, uh, Zuzo, as you're... Uh, you're looking around the room. You notice Rhea seems to trail off toward the, the door. And um, just as soon as she gets probably six or seven paces from the door, the door blasts open. And this sheep comes just barreling in and starts looking at you. And you can you can kind of tell, Rhea, it has something in its mouth. And you can't quite tell what it is exactly. But it's just, bah, 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 just frantically bang, just right directly in your face. Hmm. Uh, in her face or my face? In Rhea's face. You are you are still oh. sitting at the table, looking around the room. Uh, Daedra, you're still playing the bad pipes with the uh, the jovial group in the corner. Can I try to look in its mouth and see what it's got? Uh, so with your earlier perception, you, you realize that it's, it's a bit of a rolled piece of parchment. Um, it looks old, um, almost tattery kind of, not, not quite. You, you still manage to see it and you manage to take it from its mouth. I would like to open it up and see what it is. So as you, as you open it up and, and you begin to, to read, um, you notice... This is what it says. Can everybody see that? Yes, yes, I can. Ah, there. Speak with animals. So you notice he has a speak with animals scroll. Um, and, and this speak with animals scroll um, 
it uh, it's a specialized speak with animal scroll. It's not quite like your your normal one. The duration on it is four hours, and uh, it has been modified for extended range and duration. And you gain the ability to comprehend and verbally communicate with beasts for the duration. Mm -hmm. So as you begin to read this scroll, you, you you roll it out and you start reading the first part of it. And the scroll actually engulfs in flames in your hands and falls into ash. And as you hear, bah, 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 thank God, finally. Oh, can, you, can you understand me? Yes. Oh, oh, by the nine hells, you can understand me. Oh, this is fantastic. Uh, my name is uh, Finithir Shinebright. I'm so glad to meet your acquaintance. My name is Rhea. Rhea, what a beautiful name. I knew a woman named Rhea one time. Such a beautiful lady. Uh, I need your help. What do you mean? Well, you see, I am a very... And as soon as you, you he starts to go on his tangent, uh, you hear the rest of the commotion outside. And the door, uh, you can hear people outside as uh, this man bursts in. It's, a, it's an orc man, and he has three wolves chained on leashes, and he busts in. And behind him, there is a, a hooded figure, a giant hooded figure. You can't tell what, what, who the hooded figure is or what they're doing. But you notice that there, there is somebody who, who just, who's, who's behind this man. And the orc speaks up and says... You! That's Master Goo's sheep. He desires to have his sheep. Uh, his sheep doesn't seem to desire to have him? <laughs> I'm uh, question at this point, with like all the commotion, I guess the band has stopped. Yeah, at this point, you almost hear like a record scratch in the tavern. It's like, whoo, everybody just kind of turns around and looks at, at what's going on. They're, everybody's just kind of saucer-eyed and looking at this, this, this man with these three wolves on a leash. And he says, I'm Master Goose, and I want that sheep. What's this thing? Sheep. That sheep belongs to Ahmed Noak, and he desires to have his sheep back. I kind of, I kind of see my, uh, compatriot, uh, getting yelled at by this guy, and I kind of sa saunter forward. Hey, what, uh, seems to be the issue here with this, uh, sheep and my comrade? Are you making a fuss, Wolfman? That sheep belongs to my master. And he has been searching for that sheep for now two days. And it is oh. my job to bring that sheep back. You are, you, so your master, so you are the submissive, you are the sub, correct? Uh, 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 I am Master Goose, but I also serve under Master Nook. Get it right. This, make, this makes no sense, but I will play along. I'm now. sorry. Your lizard brain just doesn't understand it. It's fine. Uh, I don't even hesitate at that point. Right when he says that, I throw the alcohol right on his face. So you dash <laughs> the alcohol at him? Yeah. Oh, fantastic. So you you dash this, this alcohol at him, and he actually falls what? out of the door. Like, he falls out of the tavern, just blows right through the doors and, and kind of scoops back. He's still got a hold uh, of these wolves, though. I'm not done. Okay. Uh... Right when I throw the alcohol at him, I actually have a special trait, and I'm going to do it right now, called Breath of the Dragon. And Breath of the Dragon is literally a fire breath. So you're going to Molotov him. Yeah, the, I'm going to Molotov him. The pyramid scheme guy. <laughs> so, yeah, so, so, as, so I'm as... going to go, go like this, and I'm going to act like I'm about to take a swig, but instead I'm going to go Iro on him and go... And then breathe fire. Oh, beautiful. So as, as you, you take this swig, you catch it just enough, almost like a fire breather would. You, you, you almost bypass the honey entirely. And you just get the mouthful of the alcohol. And you, you make this, uh, only, only you would just kind of notice this face. But you just kind of drop it down and 
boom, and this flame shoots directly out of your mouth. It blows him plumb through uh, the the door, and he lands outside. The the big person in tail running out behind with him. And I'm gonna need all of you to to roll me some initiative if you want to join. Uh so I only did uh four damage to fire damage, but with the alcohol, did that have like a burn effect or anything like that? Yes. Or... Yes. Sweet, sweet. Okay, cool. So here is um. I only can do that uh, for perspective. I can only do that three times a day until I long rest. Uh, I don't know how you want to do that, DM. Uh, it unless you want to say if it was like a streamline since I used alcohol, but it is a twenty foot cone. But that might not be really good because we're inside of a bar. Well, so so I, I think the way the way it plays out to me is, yeah. uh, as you did that, like you almost blew them outside. So you were kind of standing, like as you got up, you walked to the doorway and you blew them kind of outside, thus narrowly missing the the tavern itself. Okay. And now you've you have blown uh, them outside. So now. Um, uh, let me go ahead and start an active oh. encounter. To give you guys some initiative. And then do we yeah. Oh whoa, what I get? Oh that's twenty <laughs> So yeah. Um <laughs> so far all together. Alright, let's let everybody roll their initiative. My initiative is always the worst. <laughs> Fantastic. So I didn't think we were going to get into the skirmish just yet, but yeah, love it. Okay, so you guys still hear the music? Yes. Okay, so um, you did, well, what, four damage on the initial? Yes? Yes, yes. Okay. Yes, uh, yes, four so what we will do is we will deduct four from each. Oh, did I hit all of them? Yeah, on, on the way out, you oh, caught all the okay. wolves and, and goose. Okay, cool, cool. And uh, I believe it's, let's see, let me make sure we get this right here. All right, so beginning combat. It's actually your turn right on the, on the top of the initiative order. Oh, wow. So uh, since he called me that, he goes out the door scrambling probably still on fire. I kind of saunter out and I say, call me Lizard Brain. Curtle Mac gave me this brain. You call Curtle Mac Lizard Brain. Well, some lizards can breathe fire. And I'm going to step forward uh -huh. like this and do it again. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm going to do another dragon, Breath of the Dragon, a 20-foot cone, uh, 30 feet 30 feet, 20 feet. Okay. Did uh, they can do a... Uh, it is a DC 14 deck save to take half damage. And on a failed save, they take full damage. So that will be 7 damage if they do not save at all. So DC 14? Yep, I'll just uh, I'll throw the info down. There you go. So it's DC uh, 14 uh, deck save, or they take for half damage, or they take full damage if uh, they don't. Okay, for the sake of simplicity, I'm just going to roll one deck save for all three wolves. Sounds good, sounds good. Um, oh, 16, okay. they save. They, and they, then we'll do Goose, yep. we'll let him do a deck save. Oh, nat 20. Oh, nat So okay. they take half. They yep, so, uh, so uh, can... I think uh, whichever one you want to do, round up or down, so POT is three or four. We'll round up for sure. Uh, go ahead and roll your damage. Uh, it already did it, so it's uh, set, it, I rolled a seven. Okay, so then they'll take uh, they'll take we'll do four. We'll just say they take another four. And then I'm just going to use uh the rest of my movement. I have forty, so I went five ten. So I'm gonna go five ten, uh, fifteen twenty, twenty five thirty thirty five forty. I'm just gonna kind of put my back up against this cart. Okay. And then uh, I say. Hey, how do you like the taste of the flames? And then I uh, end my turn. Okay. 
So on the end of your turn, that makes it Goo's turn. He he blows back, and you can actually look as he kind of catches himself. You can see one of his eyebrows is missing, like part of this, like what he already had his patchy hair is now also missing, and he's just kind of get that shape. And he's actually going to hold um, his turn and skip uh, to the uh, to the next wolf, and the. Uh, why is it not initiating the next combat? Anyway, um, it's not wanting to do it. That's weird. I don't know why. Well, oh, what's going on? I don't know. We lose connection. Uh, oh, we have lost connection to the server. Attempting to reestablish. Okay, that would explain it then. Let's see if we can get it back pretty quick. If not, then. I I'm good. You're still good? Yeah, that, uh, uh... Oh, no, I did now. <laughs> Everybody is connected just now? We come back with, uh, a little bit of some, some issues, but we're back. And, uh, like I said, uh, Zuzo had, had pushed himself through the tavern, pushed all everybody outside, and had now used his breath, uh, attack again to, uh, cover everybody in flame. So, um, Goose, looking singed one eyebrow gone and and hair everything uh now a flame he he kind of <clears throat> realizes what's happened and he takes a minute to to bat himself uh free of of the flame uh in that time he takes another d4 damage for um the burn effect which we will roll here ooh for a total of 4 jin would be happy <laughs> And he says, get that sheep. So as soon as he says that, this this first wolf actually is going to spread wide, actually walking into, unbeknownst to it, the uh, the range of Zuzo. And trying to go this way, you're going to get an attack of opportunity, Zuzo, as he steps out of the way. Uh, on that, I'm actually going to not just get an attack of opportunity, but I'm going to... Uh use uh, a key point to do a stunning strike instead okay yeah yeah absolutely yep so when you hit uh oh wait sorry i have to i have to hit him first oh and then use and the then if i hit him when you hit a melee attack you can spend one key point and then you can make you can attempt to make them stun so i'm going to go ahead and try to attack okay uh can i target this person at all um you, can you right click no, okay possibly uh, yes, there we yeah, go. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Uh, do not think that's going to hit. Oh wait, actually, instead. Mm -hmm. Uh, on before before you say whether that hit lands or hits, mm -hmm. I'm actually going to use one of my luck my lucky trait my lucky feet that I have. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to use it one of my three. Mm -hmm. To roll another die. Go ahead. Of course, you're a lucky bastard. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to roll another d20, and then I'm going to take whichever one I decide is better. Okay. So that 15 is definitely. I would better, imagine so you'll pick that one. Plus six. Yeah. So the so it's the 15. 21. Uh, 15 to hit. Yeah. Yep. That. Oh, uh, it's a 21. To oh, hit. 21 to hit. Yeah. yeah. 21 absolutely hits. Yeah, for sure. Okay, and then I will then use uh, my key, one of my key points, going down to four, to activate Stunning Fist. So they have to uh, do a a DC a Constitution fourteen, or they get stunned. All right. Um, and then and also, like I said before, I'd still attack as well. Oh, wait, does this just replace my attack? No, it just says when I hit a melee attack, so it should still do damage and then stun on top of that if it doesn't work. So here's my attack, okay. the actual damage. Yep. Ooh, only four damage, mm -hmm. and then if they if it gets a 14 or higher on the con save, then it's saved. If not, then it is stunned. Here goes the save. Damn. 17. Okay, so it's not, not stunned, but it took four damage. Oh yeah, but you can tell with your uh, your initial couple of strikes, 
uh, with the, the fire now, it's it's matted fur from being singed, and it swinging by, and you getting those attacks. You have hurt this thing really bad. It's 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 starting to bleed all over the place as it moves, um, and it is it is going to finish its uh, its movement out by uh, circling around to here, and that's where it's going to oh. end its turn. I like that blood effect. That's cool. Deidre, what do you got? All right, I'm gonna move myself here. Okay. And I'm gonna look at the dogs or the wolves and say, which mm -hmm. one of you bitches wants to dance? And I'm gonna turn <laughs> to the burnt one. It's like, nice eyebrows. And that's gonna be my um, bonus action, which is called... Let me just give me a second. Get my sheet up. Um, which we called unsettling words. <laughs> Absolutely. On um, Mr. Eyebrows. Alrighty. Did it roll? Uh, it just it gives you the it pops it up and you can oh, actually it, roll the damage. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, actually, uh, wait. It's gonna be on his last save. He gets one d eight less. Oh, okay. So if he tries to make a save, it has to be one d eight less. Okay. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. And that's pretty good. And then, ha! ha now that he's unsettled by us. Ooh, we got an equipment words. drop from Turg. <laughs> Uh, Holy shit! I am gonna cast Thunder Wave. Thunder Wave, nice. Appreciate and that, I'm turd. Gonna, gonna do it at level two. Let's go. Oh Enjoy yes. This. And this is gonna be the range. Okay. Perfect. And now, how do I, how do I shut web? Huh? Oh, they have to do a save. Yep, so they have to all roll a DC 15 uh, constitution. Except for this guy, who will have minus 1d8. Yeah, 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 yeah. So. We also got a bonus die for whoever needs it from Sev. Ooh, whoever needs it from Sev. Appreciate the love, guys. So we'll see. Uh, so he's 1d8 less. That's a 10, so he fails. Um. <laughs> Saving throws a three for both wolves, so yeah, they're absolutely good. All right, so they're, they're the pushed front. by ten feet away, which gives me an attack of opportunity. Mm -hmm. uh, go oh, ahead and roll your forget, initial damage uh, on your thunder Cruz wave. Gets that, uh, minus. Cruz gets that minus. Yeah, he are, we already we already uh, deducted um, it. Oh, so sorry, it was a total of ten. Okay, so they they all failed. Right? Yeah, every one of them failed. So go ahead and roll your damage, and then we'll do the push ten feet, and then we'll give you the uh, uh, attack of two d eight. Okay, okay, so, um, wait, I, it doesn't roll it for uh, me, I have yeah, to. Yeah, you should see in the, in the, like, the chat over here, it should say Thunder Wave, it should say Damage, you can click that, and it should just automatically roll the damage for you. Oh, okay, there we go. Yep. Beautiful. Ooh, that was a good one. Uh, it actually procced them to, uh, to do the save after that, but we've already done the save, so we'll just, we'll delete that. They all take 15 damage. So... Deidre, do me a favor and describe what happens as both of these wolves just get singed in front of you. Well, I mean, they are hit by a wave of thunder coming from Deidre. They're like, ah! and they're pushed to oblivion, apparently. They explode yep. from my powerful... Thunder sounds. So as as you see these these drops of thunder just and dropping, you notice that that goose he he gets knocked back this way, actually bashing into this this little cart here, goes flying in, and you see a mixture of just baguettes and different fruit and stuff flying everywhere. And as he looks up, he sees all of his wolves just almost imploding with this electrical energy and just blasting all over this the square. And I'm not done with eyebrows, guy, because I got an attack of opportunity. Yep, there. you do. Uh huh. I'm gonna slack, slack with my rapier. Oh. 
So how do... Okay, standard attack? Yep, so you can right-click him and then roll your rapier. Okay. Uh, right-click him. Oh, whatever. Well, that's a lot of screens to manage. Uh, yeah. I, I I get a ten. Uh, a ten is actually unfortunately going to miss as uh, nah. as he he blows away. You you kind of swipe at him and and you manage to cut like the first part of the linens of his shirt, but you actually miss his his torso as he's blown away and and blows into the side of the uh, the cart itself. All right, now I'm gonna you know chill for now. <laughs> <laughs> I've done enough. All right. <laughs> The wolf's dead, and that wolf's dead. Rhea, we got. I'm going to look at Mr. Sheep and say, Mr. Sheep, you should stay behind me or hide somewhere, or you're going to have a bad day. <laughs> I, I, I firmly believe that. And he, he kind of like just, just saunters this way, kind of toward, uh, toward your back, and just kind of watches you. I'm going to move over here where Mr. Wolf mm -hmm. is. And I'm gonna stabby stab with my short sword. Stabity rip, stab stab with the short sword. All right, go ahead and right click, and you can roll your uh, your attack. Uh, fifteen. A fifteen. A fifteen is going to hit. And since I think I did. I will hit him again. Absolutely. A 10 is going to miss. So you do get damage on the first one. Seven. Nice. As you uh, describe what happens as you uh, you mortally wound this one. It's still alive, but, but it just barely. I say, time for the big bad wolf to die. And chop his head off. <laughs> you see, you like lance uh, your your rapier into the the side of his neck, and 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 as it as it kind of looks at you, you almost you get a feeling that it was looking at you almost empathetically. It it looked at you not not with a with a, a sense of rage or a sense of of wanting to eat you, but it was scared as it dissipates it dissipates into nothing. <laughs> seeing this at uh goose himself says this this won't be the the last you see of me i promise and he turns around and he escapes does anybody want to try to to do anything as he as he runs away oh uh, yeah uh, i would like to insult him <laughs> absolutely <laughs> <laughs> You make a vicious mockery of this man, <laughs> and his eyebrows. As he as he as he runs away, he says, "You know, I, I like my eyebrows. Shut up!" <laughs> as he escapes away, hair is for the weak, young one. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right, and that concludes the combat for here. So as as combat settles. You see Goose run away. He's tugged tail between his legs. He's he's scared. Uh, the the big man behind him. You you kind of catch a glimpse as as he's running away. You notice what was a towering man with this brown robe actually drops to all fours and starts sauntering away. And and you notice if if you look hard enough, it almost looks like the tail end of a bear running away with him. Like a creature? Huh. So, I go to Mr. Sheep and I say, I hope you are worth all that mess. <laughs> oh, I, I I assure you I am I am much so worth the uh the the <clears throat> mess 
Uh, I'm sorry. My name is Finithir Shinebright. I am uh, the most renowned wizard in, in all of Vistula. Uh, you, you've probably heard of me. Uh, you've probably heard people in the tavern talk about the, the almighty Finithir Shinebright. I'm, I'm much a humble person, but I, I, I truly need your help. I, 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 I need your help. Rhea, why are you talking to the sheep and why is it baaing crazily? Can I... Can I speak with animals casting it myself? Um, instead of wasting your spell slot, I will allow you to, if you would have read the scroll beforehand, all of you can actually commune with the, the sheep before it would have engulfed in flames. Oh, okay, so we can all talk to the sheep. Yeah, all of you can converse with the sheep known as Finithir, yes. So, are so you... You, you say you're the greatest wizard of this area, but uh, you are a sheep now. Is this not but a failure? Ah, he, quite quite an observation. I I understand that you are um you are you are a gentleman and a scholar. Let me explain. My name is Finithir Shinebright. I was a wizard. I uh, lived in a tower not far from here, and I had an apprentice. His name is Ahmed Noak. I was teaching him the ways of true polymorph. You uh you keep saying had, and were, um. Is this apprentice dead? Oh no, he's he's very much so alive. You see, I trained him from from when he was just a lad, um, not more than 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 eight or nine, uh, eight or nine dons tall. He he worked under me for for several years, and I trained him uh, using using uh, the the ways of true polymorph. Sadly. I, I went to my chamber to meditate one evening, and on uh, on the the wake, I seen him as I woke from from my sleep, holding my wand. And as I reach out to 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 stop him, I couldn't speak any utterance. But bah, bah, he he's turned me into this into this form. I need you to I, I need you to, to 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 defeat him and 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 get my wand back and restore me. Rightfully, to, to my place. So, I think I speak for all of us. Um, Rhea, and... Oh, uh, my gosh. Yeah, you're talking Rhea about Lady Bagpipes, the, the Daedra. Daedra. Daedra, thank you. Amen. I think I speak for Rhea and Daedra. If, uh, we will help you if, uh, if the, uh, the price is right, if you get my drift. Oh, Oh, price, price is price is of no no concern. I I promise you, I can I can give you anything you wish, anything. Fantastic. Oh, I mean, uh, we don't want to fleece you, but we're expensive. Listen, oh, wow. listen, no. I I have the I have the beautifulest beautifulest wool. Don't gawk, please don't gawk. It it makes me blush. I think I think if. You would be willing. You say you are one of the greatest majors or wizards uh, of uh, this uh, area. Not one of the greatest, the greatest. Get it right. Oh, okay, fantastic. So, you obviously must have a staff of the magi you can give up for your freedom. Uh, okay, then be sheep for the rest of your life. Oh, no, wait, Come wait, on, wait, let's wait, go. Wait, 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 wait! Stop! 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 I promise you. If you can restore me back to my form, I might give you my wand of true polymorph. <clears throat> might give you wand of true polymorph? Uh, yes, yes, I promise to give you my wand of true polymorph. Mm, barring a few set of causes. Excuse me, what? Uh, I said, uh, I said, and a few bars and closets. I think we should skin the sheep. What? Oh, okay. Let's fleece him. I will give you the wand. The wand of true polymorph oh. and 500 gold per person. I like this deal. And a shrubbery. She wants a shrubbery. You can have a shrubbery. Fantastic. And uh, then yes, we. Uh, I think we will take the deal. What are you to say? Yeah, I say uh, we should carry him with, uh, with us, just in case he doesn't pay. He's a sheep. 
I can ride him. Yeah, ride him. <clears throat> now that was not in the deal. No, 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 no. I, I, this is my part of the deal. They all ask for little different things. It says you stay with us, and he rides you until you've paid us. You can help guide us, Mister Sheepy Sheep. Me thinks, me thinks, me likes, me likes. Yes, yes, that, that's. I'll, I'll settle on that deal. Congratulations, you now have had made a deal with Finnethier Shinebright. I'm sure that that will be uh, put on your tombstone at the end of your life. You met me, you saw me. It's great time. Now, can we please? And we rode you. So as he, uh, as he, I guarantee you've never been rode by a cobot before. Indeed, I have not. It will be a story for my book. Yes. No, it won't. Mm. So you saddle up on Finithir, and as soon as you kind of hop up, he's just... <clears throat> <clears throat> unbecoming of a wizard. And just kind of mutters some stuff under under him, uh, under his breath. And, uh... Um, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Uh, if we're traveling, I actually need to get some stuff back. So can I uh, do a short rest while we travel? <laughs> I was actually going to say... So right now, it's about... Um, I would say it's probably two o'clock, you know, midday, somewhere around in there. So you guys can act uh, absolutely um, go around for a second, maybe take an hour or two, and um, gather up any supplies you think you might need and, and prepare for this this journey. Um, the the tower um, that you are going to is it's not very far. It's it's just a couple hours journey just outside of town, and Finithir would have would have explained that to you. Um, okay. He. I'm going to get into the full lotus position, light a little bit of incense because I need nothing. Mm -hmm. I'm going to hum a poem about Kirtlemac because that is how I'm going to take my uh, short rest while everyone else does what they want to do. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> You're cutting in and out, Rhea. What was that? I doubt that we. Oh, uh, you're still so cutting good. out pretty heavily. Yeah. Could you get a little closer to your mic, maybe? I doubt that we have enough money to get potions and things like yeah, that. Yeah, so Do I we? was going to say, you guys have uh, about, I'd say probably 20 or 30 gold um, that you can use. Plus, you just got paid from your previous uh, engagement before you got to Vistula. So you have more than enough funds to um, to gather your basic yeah. supplies, things like guys, that. Guys, don't you remember we got paid like a thousand GP for that last job? Those noodles, yeah. man. Yeah, like, dude. You got paid like a thousand. Like we even got a portable fortress. Like he said it in the last yeah. in the last quest. Yeah, but it's a mansion spell or whatever it is. Portable fortress. That's what it is, yeah. Okay. Well, I would like to go purchase potion. Okay. So you managed to do so. Uh, roll me a uh, a d4. So you managed to to buy yourself two uh, regular healing potions in the store. Um, the uh, <laughs> the the owner says, oh, "I'm sorry, this is this is all that I have," and he he, he kind of hands them to you. Um, as uh, as he kind of saunders you away, trying to to get back to the festivities himself, you could tell he's he's kind of drunk, and uh, you actually got off fairly cheap. You know, you got them at a, at a discounted price, but he's just like, "Here, take these and, and go," and you you managed to get two <laughs> potions. Anything else? Any uh, anybody else is doing before we move on? I'm good. I would like, since everyone is drunk. To steal myself a better armor. To steal yourself a better armor. Oh, I guess I'm, I'm scared. Like I have ten gold. Oh. It's not gonna happen. So we're gonna go with a five finger discount here. <laughs> Alrighty. <laughs> so um, you managed to to peruse around, and uh, in the in the process of your perusing, you. Uh, you managed to find a, an armor shop, and uh, in said armor shop, 
it's 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 kind of a small quaint little little place like i said it's you know there's nothing too too out of the ordinary but um you managed to see uh on the the front shelf there nobody is manning this this little uh like little shop or little kiosk there but there is a um a studded leather uh armor sitting there oh yeah um, that's what i'm going for the punk look <laughs> And and you kind of look at it and you're like, ah, it's kind of not my style, but I could probably make it work, kind of thing, you know. Um, and you you manage to peruse uh, and uh, go ahead and roll me a sleight of hand check. Yeah, give me a second. Um, noticing what uh what she's doing, uh, can I actually? Can I uh? actually use an ability called uh dragon's cry i can do this uh once uh i, I can do this three times per day um well i let out a cry at enemies within 10 feet i'm just gonna kind of just use it for a super loud noise to get people's attention so she has an easier time stealing garbage oh <laughs> so i'm going to stand up on top of the sheep notice what my ally's doing she's probably done this type of shisty stuff in the past so i kind of get the yeah I, the, we, we have this routine like i steal something yeah. you distract <laughs> yeah so i'm gonna stand up and i'm just gonna be like out of complete pure surprise so no one's expecting it just <laughs> real loud real long you're like a medieval I'm car alarm one of, yeah <laughs> i'm gonna use one of I, i'm like i'm like a slightly deeper like parakeet Oh, like real loud, so, and I'm gonna use one of my abilities for it. So as um, as you see, Daedra is kind of slipping on through. She notices this this leather armor there, and uh, she kind of looks around, sees nobody, and almost reaches up, almost to like not quite gonna pick it off, but just pretend for a second to be feeling it. And um, this halfling steps out and says, "Oi, what you doing?" You, uh, you, uh, uh, Tiefling, what, what are you doing? I'm getting a feel for the armor. I'm, eh, you know, not sure it's my style. Ah, for the right price, I can put it right on you. I just, woo, oh, what was that? And you manage to, oh, and you, you, you run off with it. <laughs> and before he looks, he says, uh, what, what in the world? She was just right here. <laughs> Fuck me. Good, oh, oh, crazy. That's the last time I drink that mead. And you now have... It's good. Um, if you look in your inventory... Mm -hmm. You should have a... Well, let me see. Let me fix it. It's showing Thank it you. on the ground now. <laughs> it's on the ground. It's on the ground now. Anyway, it's good because halflings are only slightly better than gnomes. You should have a plus one leather armor. A plus one leather armor. That's correct. Oh my Pretty god! Sure. Are you able That's to so equip good. it for me? Because I'm just gonna. Uh, yes. We're gonna be here all night. Equipped. You should. Your armor class should be fourteen now. All right. Let's see. That's that's so good. Yep. We like that's probably the best thing we've stolen all day. <laughs> So, um, Finnithor says, <clears throat> if, 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 we, we, we must be going. Time is of the essence. <clears throat> and he starts patting at his, at his hoof like this, knowing that he, Goodmo, does not have a watch. Okay, well, let, uh, let's uh, get to the going. Giddy up, and I'm going to giddy up my sheep. So, as, uh, as you guys are, um, making your way through, um, you you lead out of Vistula and it opens up to this this kind of a dense forest. Um, you you notice that there are, are cut paths. There's there's nice paths um, heading through. Um, you're uh, you're kind of making your way downtown. You're kind of walking fast and you know faces past and you're homebound. You know, um, and uh, as you as you walk by, you notice that there's a, a small very small like a guard tower. Um, and in front of that guard tower, it looks like there are two wolves. Um, and those two wolves are standing upright on their hind legs, walking like humans. 
Oh, look at them puppies. So, what? These, these animals. Has, has your prince gone on like a polymorph rage? And just bibbity booing everybody in the... Listen, I I have no clue. I really don't know. I, I don't know what he's done. I don't know what he's doing. I don't know what he's going to do. All I know is that he has my my staff of true polymorph, and it it's it's not good. Oh, well, what do you think? Should we blast through these uh, walls or sneak past? Should we try to talk to? Them? I don't think that's going to work. If uh, how aggressive the last ones seemed, these ones are probably going to be just so. Especially if they notice we have the uh, sheep that they want. And and you, it's not going to go well. You do notice that that along each side of this path there is kind of a, a densely uh, populated forest area, and there's also to your left, it's kind of a uh, like a a, a wooded uh, kind of a bushy area, and there's a creek that runs um, to the left, and it kind of dips down a little bit, uh, just out of sight of, of what's going on. In front of this path needs to be Some more. What did you say? We're having a hard this time. This path needs shrubbery. <laughs> shrubbery. We want a shrubbery. Well, I think uh, if you two believe it to be the right path, we should... Uh, Sneak our way around so we don't have to fight these things and cause a, a delay. Um, anybody who wants to can give me a perception check really quickly. Yeah, I'll do a perception. I, I, I rolled the same thing I did last time. You are not the most perceptive lizard man. Uh, that is extremely derogatory towards Cobalt. Is that a nat 20 I see? Yeah, the natty boy. It's old natty boy. So, Daedra, as you are looking past the wolves and into the guard tower, you notice that there is, um, it's your typical guard tower. It's just kind of a slim, uh, like, cylinder shaft that comes up, and then there's almost like a basket uh, patio uh, on top with, like, a, a roof or a netting, and there's a little, um, a little thing that sticks out, and... On that uh, little extension, um, there's a pile of something. It almost just looks like, uh, you would think it was like maybe just like a pile of garbage or something. Um, but it just, it looks kind of out of place. You figure somebody would be standing there, but instead there's just this, like a gooey looking pile. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna communicate that first to Rhea. So Rhea, she she speaks to you and says, you know, look, look at that pile that's that's up there. Do do you commu okay. communicate that to the rest of the party or? Oh yeah, first to to Deirdre because like uh, she's a ranged ranger, and then to uh, Mr. Zusa. Okay. So there's this this pile up there. It's up on the tower, you said. Yeah. So it's it's like your typical. It almost looks like a. Um, uh, I mean, it's made out of like sticks and canvas. It's just kind of like your standard outpost guard tower type deal. It's not more than two stories, uh, like a base story, and then you know maybe like one set of stairs up to like an overlook basket that has kind of like a balcony with like a thatch roof kind of deal. Did you say thatch roof? Yes. It's a thatch roof. Yes, wetened. Oh, you can pump. Oh, I think we should just, uh, I think we should sneak past, save time. So if, if nobody says anything, I'm going to lead the party to the right towards the water because the water is it is it like moving? Yeah, it's I mean quickly? it's like your standard creek. I mean it's not necessarily rushing like a like a rapid, oh, but it's okay. it's a flowing uh, river, a flowing creek. 
essentially. It's okay. a it's a pretty wide. I mean, you'd probably say maybe um, 30, 40 yards across, just a, a good standard river. Okay. I'm going to, once we get to the right, I'm going to look at the party and I'm say I'm going to make a distraction to the left. While they go to investigate, we go to the right. And I'm going to pick up a rock and I'm going to beam it to the left of their, like, little road thing that they're you know, blocking it off. Mm. Maybe hit a tree, maybe throw it in the bushes. You know, just to make some no rustling noises to make them go that way while we go the other way. Okay. Um, is, that, is everybody else following that? If, if, yeah, mm -hmm. as long as everybody's cool with that, that is. I didn't hear any This is like a, it's a routine that we've done before. I yeah. mean, just when we stole that my beautiful armor. Yeah. It's totally mine, and that's stolen. <laughs> yeah, hey. um, unless somebody has an objective, it sounds like that's the way to go, unless you guys want to do something. Like uh, like Dion said in the chat, the best the best nation is a donation. You know what I mean? This is true. So, uh, okay. I'm just going to pick up a hefty rock then, and give it a old beam. Okay. Um, give me... Uh, give me an athletics. We'll see. Let's, 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 like just for the throw or an acrobatics, whichever one you'd like to do. Yeah, I'll, let's go acrobatics. Why not? That work. Oh, okay. Uh, that is twelve because I had plus six. So uh, <laughs> it's above fifty percent. Right? Yeah. So you find this. You find this. You know, it's kind of a hefty little rock, and and you hurl it. And it goes flying across the, the the way and it smacks into the, the bushes opposite. The two wolves turn and look at each other and say, Hey, Bo, did you hear that? And he says, Yeah, man. What was that? I don't know, feller. Let's go check it out. And they both just kind of on hind legs walk toward the area okay. in which you threw that. I wanted to sneak, but after hearing those voices, I look back to the party. You guys know we have to kill them now, no? Right? They have to die. Thing, things of that nature cannot be let to live. No, let's uh, let's ask our friend. Your your mount. Oh, my mount! And I grab him by. Does is he? A, he's a male sheep, so he has horns, right? Yeah, yeah. He's 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 technically a ram I, by all rights. He he doesn't necessarily have like by, huge like arcing horns, but he does have. What I looks grab like by the nubs. Yeah. I grab him by the nubs. I lift him up. And I'm just like, could we kill them or sneak what? away? I'm a person, <laughs> you know. Not right now. You're not. No, true. Uh, yeah, I might be a sheep true. technically, but I'm a person, you know. No. True polymorph means you are sheep truly until you are not anymore. <gasps> do we kill them or, or or do we get away? We only have a few seconds. Come Listen, on. Listen, it, like, it would be what... Okay, obviously this is the work of Ahmed Noak. You you see, the, you see the people, like the thing, that's wolves and they're talking. That's... Okay, they're, wolves don't talk, do they? Lizard man. Unless you're using speak to animal. Kill or no kill? Did you call me lizard man again? We eat you. Okay, fine. Kobold. The best of your kind. Yeah. Beautiful. Magical man. Is that, yeah. does that I let go of better? his horns and I pet him. So, question. Go ahead. How far away is that platform that has, like, the... Um, so since you guys are kind of sneaking around by the river, um, the the actual uh, outpost tower itself is probably 60, 70 yards from you. Um, just enough that you can tell that there is something there and it's, it looks kind of weird, but it's it's too far away to actually notice what's going on. By this time, the, the wolves, they have sauntered off out of your view. And he says, I guess he says, no kill then. It's, it's, they'll be fine. It's imperative that we go and we get my, my wand back. I mean, <clears throat> your wand. I mean, uh, my, the wand. We, we get the wand back. Can we get, can we get the wand okay. back, please? Okay. Sheep says we go. So I'm going to continue to go. Let's go. 
And as as you guys pass by and you get closer to that tower, um, actually, Daedra and and uh, Rhea, you guys are the first to actually kind of notice it together. Um, there are patches of fur in that goo that's on that pile. It 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 looks like um, it just looks like a big pile of dung, but it's like a purplish gray color, and it has patches of fur and like bone in it. And you you sneak your way by. No. So as you you continue your walk, you you eventually make it to uh, a, a bit of a dense forest and into a into a clearing. And in that clearing, uh, Finnethir he perks up and he he almost bucks you off of him, Zuzo, as he's just kind of oh we're getting close we're getting close it's it's up here I promise it's right up here. And, mm -hmm. and, and as you, you walk up, uh, you kind of in the distance see uh, a giant tree. And in this giant tree, it looks like that there has been built a, um, almost like a tree house set up. But the tree itself has been hollowed out and there's a door at the base and you see almost like a tree house little room up on a branch and a, another little room up in a branch, but it's all connected to this giant tree, um, seemingly just intertwined with vines and um, different structures, almost by, by uh, use of magic. Huh. What do you think we should do about this, comrades? Well, so far I've been chronicling this adventure under the wizard's new groove. What says you? Wizard? Sheep? Sheep? What, what do we what? do? Uh, this, is, this is my tower. This is where I live. Oh. Is there, is there any traps we need to know about? Is there defenses? Traps? Okay, now's now's the time for me to tell you, uh, Mr. Mr. Noak, my apprentice. He he's kind of a paranoid individual. Um, gets kind of worried sometimes. Uh, maybe traps. The only reason I escaped was because uh, in all of his studies, he forgot to lock my cage, and that's how that's how I got out. And I managed to to break into the library and steal a scroll. Um, okay. All right, all right, all right, all right. I, I know what exactly what he, we do. So, uh, wizard here knows his apprentice best. I say he leads the way. I was going to say the same thing. We on the great same minds, page. Great minds. Great minds are usually sheep. I mean, think alike. Yes, <laughs> think alike. A hundred percent for sure. Okay, lead the way. Uh, okay. And, uh, so as you, you walk into the clearing, um, you, you see, uh, See if I can uh, see if we can load this map for you guys. Uh, boom. And we will do this for everyone else. So uh, as the sheep uh, looks at you, he says, "He says now you you must be mindful. There there are there there are guards." Uh, uh, would you have like a password that you give your guards if like say like to let them know that we're cool and they should let us in would would i have a password yes would my paranoid apprentice have a password i don't know i have idea anything is a good idea to yeah. me kobold man uh, do we, can we see any of the guards? Not currently, but, um, okay. if anybody wants to give me a perception check, you can. I'll do that. Alright, let's see that. Come on, seven again. Hey, I didn't do seven this time. Oh. Nope. Um, so yeah. <laughs> nice! So, though, you, you kind of, uh, as you look... You're kind of squinting a little bit, trying to watch, and you notice at the base of the, at the base of the tree, um, as you guys are sitting there talking, it takes a minute, but you notice uh, two bears on their hind legs, 
and they walk up, look at each other, kind of seemingly converse for a second, and they go their opposite ways, walking the opposite ways of the tower. Oh, okay. I, I look behind. It seems as though the gods are on a typical guard route. We can either try to pick them off and kill them one by one, or we can try to sneak past and maybe get caught by them all. What uh, did you say, Rhea? Can I ask the wild to be sneaky? You want to cast what to be sneaky? Well, it's really a cast here, but um, I can hide even when only like obscure. Uh, I didn't think we quite got that. What yeah, were you, you trying to? In and out. Yeah. It's bad. It's a stupid phone. Um, Mask of the Wild is basically just great, but uh, I can hide even when only lightly scared. So yeah. I can try to be sneaky. Yeah, yeah Mask of the Wild for sure. So uh, between, uh, if you want to cast Mask of the Wild, you can actually cast it on the on the on the party uh, for the sake of it. You can kind of blanket everybody as long as they follow you. Um, and mm -hmm. if you want to follow Benethir, um, he looks and he says, now, I, I, it's, it's, it's been a moment, and again, it's not my tower anymore, I've been locked away for now five, six years now, I don't know what he's changed, I don't know what he's not changed, but, you've been a sheep for five or six years, I've been a sheep for five or six years, yes, you did not tell us this, I didn't find it pertinent. The story at the time. keeps changing. It becomes pertinent because now the thing that you're trying to pay us with might not even have magic left. Oh, I promise you, it has magic left. But if it doesn't, how about a thousand gold? A thousand gold? For your troubles? A piece? I might be cobalt that doesn't know a lot about magic items. But I know a, a, a wand of true polymorph is much more expensive than a thousand gold. Okay, fine, two thousand gold. I think we should leave. By the way, um, question, question. I think it's an important question. Since you've been a sheep for six years, how'd you know you got any gold left? Oh, I have a hidden safe true. house that not even Noak knows about. Oh, you, you think in six years he hasn't found out? Oh, absolutely. It's not even here. Okay, else we fleece you, huh? Okay. So let's I'm going to fleece you today one way or the other. Let's let's continue on. And if this, if he doesn't, we'll make sure we get payment before we turn him back into a human. Yes. That's that's fair. Uh, that's okay. fair. I agree. I agree. We can we can do that. That's fine. But but now follow okay. follow me. Do you want to get eaten by bear? Kind of, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, he he says he says follow me, follow me, and he sneaks you around. And we look like animals right now, right? Yeah, yeah. so you, you guys have kind of, like, taken on the form. Like, you yourselves, you look normal. But to anybody who looks upon you, you just kind of look like a, a, a pack of, of, of animals of some sort. So if any one time, like, you, you wanted to separate, one of you would look like a, a deer and the other one would look like a squirrel and so on and so forth. He says, uh, follow me, follow me. So as you're you're following him around, uh, you guys can actually click on your token and use uh, W A S and D, and you can actually move your tokens. By the way, so he sneaks you around, and 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 you see that there's like some some guards' quarters here and things like that, and uh, he sneaks you up through through the middle, and he says. <clears throat> up here, up, up here. And as he he jumps into this little like shrub here, he says, R "Right, right across from me." And and right here's what he's talking about. He says, "Right across from me. There, there is. This is this is the the kitchen. This is where they 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 dump the scraps. It's a small chute. It, it's it's just big enough to to possibly fit. Well, 
all of you, you're kind of small people. Uh, possibly all of you. Okay. Oh, thanks, Alpha, for the uh, the bonus die. Oh, remember, we still have the other bonus die from Sev we as well. bonus die from Sev, and there's also and there was uh, a special an equipment, item, drop. An equipment drop from Turd. Keep in mind. Yeah, he told us he told us to roll one d four, uh, to see who gets it. Okay. Uh, I don't remember what they each number was, but I know number four was if you rolled a four, the enemy got it. <laughs> yeah. So it says uh, one item goes to Rhea, two goes to Zuzo, three to Daedra, and four to an enemy NPC. So whoever wants to roll me a D four. Let's do it. Oh, yeah! Fantastic. I love it. Okay. So, uh you're you're now sitting in a shrub, you're perfectly hidden. You do notice that in the time that you're that you're sitting here that the two uh bears have actually uh crossed paths again. It almost looks like they're walking in a clockwise counterclockwise way and they kind of meet each other every once in a while in in weird various patterns. Sometimes north south, sometimes east west, it depends on how fast they walk. Okay, so we're heading over here then. Yes, so you would know that the little chute is is in this general location, yes. Okay. So I'm going to scamper on over with uh Danger. Leave my happy place. <laughs> and so he says the the easiest way is 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 through here. And then, then we'll we'll break through uh, into into the common area, and then up the stairs. I promise. Follow me. And so you guys break in, and you can. Oh, go ahead. I feel like we should have done this a while ago. What? But can I can I just do a uh, a uh, insight check? It's not lie detecting, but like to get a a, a feel about like where he's coming from with this. Oh, you want to insight check the sheep? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Again, insight is not lie detection, but it's you know getting a. So uh, I did, I did, I forgot to mention this beforehand. Um, so whenever I DM, insight checks are um, like you said, they're not quite lie detector tests, but you can also kind of tell um, intention. Or yeah, yeah, um, that's what I'm going. Yeah, for. like a, either positive or negative. Uh, so yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna do that. Just try as we're walking, kind of too late now, but like you know. Okay, that's a that's an eight. So you you um you're believing him. You you have no choice. You're 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 a, a kind of a a guest in his house, so to speak. You have no choice but to to really kind of be like, yeah, um, I I'm gonna follow him until proven otherwise. You you might be skeptical. But uh, at the current moment, um, your your apprehension is hidden. How about that? Okay. And I'm gonna just say that my dumb stop is wisdom. Uh, hey, listen. Um, the 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 emotionally driven are just as great as the logically driven. It's fine. <laughs> what you got? I'm good. I'm good now. I'm gonna keep falling. Yep. Okay. So. Um, as as you guys walk through, you find the common area, um, and to the to the right uh, down here, it would be like your your south uh, southeast. You find that there's a, a set of stairs, and he kind of runs up, and and Finithir kind of he he kind of starts bleating at the door and starts kind of bashing his horns at the door and says, "This is the stairs. This is the stairs. I promise." Um, is it locked? It is currently locked, but he says, <clears throat> if, I, if I remember right, I, I kept a key underneath the, the bookshelf over there. Uh, okay. I'll go give it a check. Unless, uh, actually, Ray, you give it a check. Let's see what's, let's see what's up <laughs> there. <sighs> okay. I will look for the keys. So give me a uh, a perception check or an investigation, something like that. Mm 
up a page again. Oh yeah. Absolutely. You just kind of walk up and you're looking at the books, looking at the books, and you're seeing all this stuff, and you just kind of, you just kick the edge of the shelf, and it just kind of, you hear the jingle, and you're like, ah, reach down, found them. You know, instead of looking through all these books, you just kind of kick and you find this jingle. Like you just, you just kind of knew it was there the whole time. And you managed to unlock the, the door. <clears throat> And so you, as you guys head up the stairs, um, you start hearing a, uh, a familiar voice. You start hearing the, uh, the voice of Goose, and he said, Uh, door is still locked. Yeah, it is, on purpose. Oh, okay, And he sorry. says, I, uh, I, I, I almost had them, I promise I almost had them. I, it, it, it was, it was not my, my fault. And you hear a voice from the other door that says, Now, now. It's perfectly fine. You didn't do anything wrong. And you see a flash of, of light underneath the uh, the door. And that is where we're going to take our mid-session break. Back again. So, we uh, just took our little intermittent, intermittent break. Everybody's back. Um... Just before we had went to break, uh, the party had infiltrated the bottom side of the tower and uh, unlocking the door to the bottom of what they would be known as a staircase, they noticed a flash of light. So uh, you guys managed to, to unlock the door, you go up the stairs. Um, it's a spiraling staircase. Uh, you would think almost typical of a um, uh, a spiraling staircase of just um, interwoven vines and uh, a mixture of cobblestone. As as your typical castle, kind of spiraling uh, up up around. You, you manage to walk, and there's there's different torches that go uh, all the way up. As soon as you get to the, the top floor, you begin to hear uh, a seeming conversation between uh, two people. Um, you you see a, the the flash of light there, and uh, he says, I, "I I promise, I promise, I I tried my best to get your sheep back. I promise." Now that's just not good enough, now is it? As you, you reach the top flight of stairs, there's a, a door in front of you. It's a it's an oak door, probably about seven feet tall, uh, rounded at the top. And underneath, you can see a flickering light with occasional kind of like spurts of almost like lightning. Um, and uh, what would you like to do? Uh, can I kind of peek my little snout in and see what's going on? The door itself is locked. You, you reach and you, you, you jar it again. You, you, you unlock the, you manage to unlock the first door, but as you come up, the, the second door is locked. To, uh, to the left and to the right are, um, also doors, uh, but they are also locked as well. And you said the door is wood? It is wood, yes. What's the lock made out of? Uh, the lock itself seems to be your typical, um, almost like a, a, a brass lock. Uh, it doesn't look anything out oh, of the brass. ordinary to you. Yes. Okay. Um, does anyone have any experience with picking locks? Uh, do I? Do I have Teeb's tools? I'm not sure. Because if not, I could always, you know, take the lock off, and I lift my little cobalt fist up, and I kind of give it like a squeeze, like a fist. Don't we have the keys? And as I do, and uh, the, these keys don't work for this door, right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, if you wanted to, you could try the keys. We try the keys? Yeah, they don't work. <laughs> okay, that's what I thought. Uh, I squeeze my little cobalt hand together, and it starts dripping with acid. Because I actually have a, a draconic strike, and like I could just take the uh, the the, 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 the 
Knock off my acid. Certainly try. Uh, if no one's going to stop me, or if they have any Oh, ideas. I have team tools. Ooh. Oh, never mind. Cool. Let's go with yeah, team tools. Yeah, absolutely. Then. So okay. you can, uh, you can go ahead and make me a, um, let's do, um, make me a sleight of hand check. 19. Oh. So... As you, uh, as you, She's a bit uh, of a thief, yes. <laughs> what was that? She's a bit of a thief. Oh, absolutely. So as you, um, as you, you manage to, to get down by the door, you kind of, you, you start jimmying with it a little bit, and occasion like, uh, at first, you kind of get a little bit of a, um, a bounce back. It's almost like your, your thieves tools have a spark in it, um, and uh in the the spark you kind of notice that there's there's a magical kind of um enchantment to the lock but you uh you manage to kind of resist the the defense i guess that's on the lock and you manage to pick it and it is now unlocked epic <laughs> good uh Good job, comrade. Mm -hmm. Uh, so... Peek your head in, see what you can see. Right, I'm gonna... No, I'm... You know what? Somebody else have a look, because I'm... I really need to get glasses. Okay, you're right. Rhea. Alright. I saw. Take a little look. Um, so as you peek into the door, give me a, uh, perception check. Hmm, an 11. Okay, so as you, you look in, you, you see a, um, a dimly lit, um, room. And in this room, there are, um, different little, uh, there's like a desk and there's a, a study and you're kind of slowly kind of like peeking in so you don't get the full effect uh, but you notice that there are sconces and, and lanterns along the wall as well as little fire pits that are illuminating, illuminating and you can hear a conversation between two people and you hear this man say now go and find my sheep and what you heard once was I'm sorry, boss. I'll, I'll... <laughs> that's all you hear. This guy. We can't hear you. This guy is definitely not a good guy. He just turns his that that guy into a monkey. Might have helped his okay. looks, you know. <laughs> what type of monkey? Maybe. So you would you would infer that there was a um, uh, a type of monkey for for sure. Now, uh, the voice you heard before the monkey was was actually Goose's voice. Oh, okay. And the 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 second voice uh, is is unknown to you. And Finnethir speaks up and he says, "That that's him. He's in there. He's he that that's him." Alright, let's go get him, I guess. Let's go get him, yes. Let's skin the sheep. I mean I not I mean kill that person and get a reward. So you, you what are you guys doing? You gonna break into the room? Or do you see Uh I, I guess oh. oh oh or 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 I could first of all distract them. Oh, because I do believe that I have something like thaumaturgy or can project my voice somewhere else or something like that. That'd be good. Mm -hmm. Do we have dynamite? No, you would not have dynamite. <laughs> uh, let me check. Uh, da, 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 da. Of course we don't have dynamite. Dynamite. Don't. Dynamite. 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 D
Yeah, okay, so I can create an instantaneous sound that originates from a point of your choice within range, such as a rumble, a thunder, nice. the cry of a raven, or ominous whispers. Okay. Nice, nice. So, to uh, for us to have a better chance of jumping him, I would probably want to project a sound that comes from the opposite end of the room. But... Oh. I'm always dead. Project, uh, can you project? Oh, sorry. I'm always down for ominous whispers, make them think they're crazy. Sheep. Do a sheep ball on the other side yeah, of the room. I think I'm gonna go for a sheep ball at the um, opposite end of the room from the door. Okay. Is is. And then and then I assume I assume we're like we're like we're stacking up like we're That's what I was just getting ready to ask. Is, is yeah. anybody actually like peering through the door to see what effect that has or who's what's the what's the marching order here? What's the the stacking order here? Um. So Daedra had just unlocked the because door and Rhea had looked in to see. I think because of my key points, I can be the most defensive. Mm -hmm. So I can probably go in first yeah. as like a pseudo tank. Okay. And then you guys fall behind me. I believe that's called want. a glass cannon. Yep. So what are we saying? Uh, well, I actually do have. Suzo first, have like Daedra, a and then Rhea, or Rhea and then Daedra? Yeah, I would be in the middle because that uh, Rhea has probably more ranged attacks. So. Okay, and then yeah. uh, is where, what do you have Benefit doing? He just kind of sit there. He's kind of useless. So he's just trailing behind Rhea. Yeah, I, I I would assume. Okay, so as as uh, Zuzo, as you as you crack that door and you're kind of looking, you hear you hear uh, Daedra. She kind of cups her hand. Here. And it, it seems to roll around her. Like, you can hear it because you, you understand what's going on. But you see it almost roll yeah. around the room. You can almost see the sound wave as it kind of scoops around the room. And, and as it gets to the far side, it just... Ah, bah, bah. And, and you swing that door open. And you see uh, just, uh, just across the room from you is... Um, uh, a human male. He's probably about five foot seven, five foot eight, wearing a yellow robe, blonde hair. And he turns and he says, I, "No, I didn't just hear that sheep. I know I didn't just hear that." And he turns, actually turns with his back to you, looking toward the direction of the sheep. Okay. On that, I'm going to take n no hesitation. I'm going to jump. Into the room, uh, there was a big monkey that was supposed to be right. Is there is it in the you, room? You know that there that you heard the sound of a monkey. You don't okay. see a monkey. Well, I, but room. I don't see one. Okay. Well, how far away, like how far away is he from me, from the door? Uh, 35, 40 feet. Okay, I have 40 feet of movement. Can I get to him before he turns around? Yeah, absolutely. You could uh, in the if if you okay. if you can manage to 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 break uh, and and sneak yeah before he sees you yeah sure. I don't even want to try to sneak. I want a oh, dead you just want a sprint. Last dead sprint. I I want because I want to I want a stunning fist him immediately. Oh yeah yeah for sure yeah yeah okay. So so I want to pop that door open. The, my teammates know what's going on. They know to come in behind me. And We've I'm done that thing before. And then I'm going to kidney punch him, stunning fist. Oh yeah, hell yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so, so you you rush in, and he's still looking around for the sheep. And before he can turn around, he he turns to just notice this wisp of of just red, uh, as as you just kind of almost make your presence known. Like it was almost like you're a blur, and then now you're a thing. And before he notices what's going on, he looks down and he sees a fist just directly into his abdomen. What do you say? Oh, I so I sprint in. And I'm like, let's curtle back, no your sins, and then right to his, uh, right to his uh, oh, kidneys. Beautiful, beautiful. So, so yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, um, that's going to be. Uh, does it hit or do I roll to hit? Uh, or... It's a sneak attack. I'll let you just go ahead and land it. That was beautiful. Okay, yeah, fantastic. Sure. 
Awesome, awesome. And then, so that's just gonna be one on unarmed mm -hmm. strike. Uh, damage. Normal. Yep. So he's. Wow. So that's eight bludgeoning. Oh, actually, I'm gonna switch that to eight acid okay. damage. And then, uh, on top of that, I'm going to then do my. Uh, my stunning strike for one key point. Yep. Go ahead. Uh, so. Stunning strike. Uh, it's not really a roll, kind of. Uh, so, uh, but I am also going to use lucky right mm -hmm. now. Uh, so I'm going to use my lucky right now mm -hmm. on this. So I'm going to roll so a d20. Is that your so last he, lucky he or rolls. just two? Uh, I did a I did a short rest, so you I actually have, have them all again. You're correct. Yep. Um. So this goes away. He's going to roll, and I'm going to roll, and then I can pick whichever one I want for okay. him to use. So he has to make the DC 14 constitution? Yep. Oh, I'm actually just going to give him my lucky roll right now. <laughs> so here's his constitution saving throw. Nine. Yeah, let's give him my lucky <laughs> roll. <laughs> All right, so... Describe what happens as he's now uh, stunned. Uh, so right when he right when he goes down, I assume he kind of lurches over a little Absolutely. bit. I'm gonna stick my little old boy tongue out, and be like, I'm going to eat eyes with his head. <laughs> and uh, I assume that's my that's like my surprise. Scene. So uh, I that's where I'll end yeah, myself. Yeah, absolutely. So as he's stunned, he looks and he says. Uh, uh, you why are you here a little sheep sent us a little finithir whatever his name is finithir sent you hey um at this point before we yeah, like because I take it like we're not in combat combat now since we're still talking. Yeah, I think we're still in. We're in like yeah, a surprise we're, we're round. Yeah, we're still aren't, technically aren't in a surprise still... round. We haven't actually initiated uh, any sort of initiative yet. So I could still. Yeah, we're, say, we're cast... because we're I would in, I would assume you guys are still in free action. Yeah. You guys can still. I mean, you can okay. you can pop into the room if you'd like. Uh, okay. Like one. I would allow just at least one kind of an action or a movement beforehand, and then yeah. Okay, because I would probably want to drag the sheep with me and then cast Zone of Truth in the middle of us. Oh. What is the uh, the range on Zone of Truth? Uh, 15 feet. So, if if you want to, you can move within. You want to drag the yeah, sheep? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm dragging the sheep. You come on in. Okay. And we're going to go have a chat. Okay. So, you uh, you drag the sheep in. Uh, Rhea, what are you doing yep. in your in your last little uh, little bit here? Um, just, I'm just I wanted to... Yeah, I'll come Sorry. back to you in just a second. I just want to make sure I know what she's doing before we do everything. I'm just kind of like standing guard with my bow. Okay, so you're at the top of stairs, standing guard. I'm in the room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're at, you're in the room, but you're just kind of like you're right at the top of the stairs. Yeah. Okay, Daedra, what do you got? Well, I mean, before casting Zone of Truth, I would have probably wanted to uh, give him some unsettling words so he has a harder time uh, saving his next. Uh, Central. Absolutely. What do you say? Um, and I say like, uh, I understand it's been six years in the making for this conversation. Six years? You mean six years I've had that wretched master of mine in a fucking cage? So, uh, wait a second. It's in features. What? Watch your profanity. I say in cobalt wood. So he's gonna have a minus six on his next save. Okay. And he he almost taken like he's almost taken uh, aback by the fact that you um 
you would insult him by saying that he's treated his master in such a way, and that's what throws him off his game, is, how dare you? You, you know nothing about me, so what if I kept him in a cage? Why did you keep him in a cage, huh? Because his values and my values are not the same. Can't just keep people in cages for that. You you have no idea. For decades, he treated me like a child. He expected me to cook, clean, recite answers um, to his spells by 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 rote. Is is the zone of truth active now or not while he's speaking? Yes, while he is speaking, it is it is absolutely in effect. Because yeah, and I would know if he did get his saving throw or not because how it works is they have to save like every few minutes I think uh, yeah uh, you can always yeah, you uh, can, throw you the can, zone of truth the button in, the, in the chat and we can we can all read it together but yeah uh, whenever you cast that uh, it, click the button in the chat yeah um, whenever you use the oh no in, in the in the ability if you click the ability and then it shows uh, the rolls uh, below it you can Click info under the ability. Yeah. Put it okay. In there, there you go. Um. So. Uh, I um. I rolled his initial deception and he did fail. Um. I just kind of rolled it uh, as a private GM roll, just for the sake mm -hmm. of RP. He did fail, just so you know. So he, so all of the, all the things that he is saying is truthful right now. Okay. Uh, yeah, it can just not be an outright lie, but they can still and like... And I can, like, thumbs up to my team who knows what I'm doing. Yeah, so anytime, cool, anytime cool. that he says something that that would be, um... It's, like, he obviously can't speak, a, like it says, a deliberate lie. Mm -hmm. But he can, can kind of finagle the truth a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, so whenever whenever you, you ask him about that, he says... He says, uh, again, for, for decades, he, he kept me locked up. Expected to cook, clean, and 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 study his his scrolls by rote. He kept he kept you locked up. What says you, sheep? <laughs> I, I, I I might have done that, but it was for his own good. I promise, it was for his own good. I was learning the boy. I'm gonna grab a chair and says like, looks like uh, we need a couple's therapy here. And then Noak looks at you, and he says, "He says it. It baffles me how." And he looks at the sheep. He says, "It baffles me how someone so bright could be so dim. It it didn't register that 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 I was human. I um, I couldn't spare a century to to serve out an apprenticeship like this man. Before the stone wears off, I'm gonna tie this dude up. You're gonna tie him up? Yeah. Okay." Now let's tie both of them up on a chair and do therapy. Okay, yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna bound bind his hands together, um, and his feet, so he can't like cast stuff, um, unless it's just purely somatic. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna hop um, tie the. Does he have a wand or anything on him? So, uh, on his person. He does not have anything that resembles a, a wand. I'm going to rip his shirt off. <laughs> so you rip his robes off? Yeah, I rip his robes off. Um, so as you rip his robes off, you can notice that he has like little scar marks or like little um, markings, but nothing that really indicates anything to you other than the fact that they look like um, almost like defense runes. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, he, he has uh, what would be indicated to anybody who is kind of uh, trained somewhat in the arcane that um, kind of almost barrier runes, but like basic ones, I guess. To, to okay. Speak. Um, I'm going to uh, ask a question. We got Real quick. Uh, oh, yeah, continue. Yeah. What's, what's with all the animals, all the humans that are turned into animals are you just randomly going around willy-nilly turning people into creatures like the wolves out in the forest and he looks he just looks disgusted how dare you question my methodology 
I am a wizard, an established wizard. But would that's you... a sheep that's hog tied, right? Huh? That's the, the sheep that's hog tied. Yeah, so Finithir actually speaks up first before Noak does. And he's, he's I'm an established wizard, and Noak says, I've, I've been learning the arts of true polymorph. I can't help it that I'm only limited by what he has given me. And he points, and you can actually see in the corner of the room over here, uh, you see the wand, and the wand is, it's, it's a staff, it's like a big quarter staff, but it's been like taped up and bandaged up, and you can actually see there's like little bits of like little arcane energy, it just looks like some wild arcane magic, like some, oh. you might be able to cast something with it, but it, it might not do what you want it to do, or it might kind of do what you want it to do, you just kind of okay. don't understand. Uh, while they're talking, I want to take my little nasty kobold claw, and I just want to, I just want to cut, like, a little line in every single rune. Look. So, you notice he's... He actually takes one point of damage for uh, every time that you do that. Okay, um, cool. How many runes does he have? Because we're going to do it until they're gone. <laughs> he has about five, for sure. Five then he's six, taking like, five condition. damage. Because I'm just going to... Yeah. And, uh... So uh, as you as you eliminate those, you can see him just kind of oh, wince and 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 uh, as as you you kind of make your claw marks through, you can see him kind of flash a, a little bit of like an aura and then just fizzle out to just a scar. Okay, I'm just gonna let my companions keep talking as I finish that up. Yeah. So are you are you polymorphing these people against their will? Are you asking that to Anok or, or Fenthir? Uh, Anok. To Noak. Noak says, not really against their will. I, I invited them to the tower as part of an experiment, and they knew what they were getting into. They just didn't know that if it failed, they would die. I think that's all the information we need. Now, well, I guess we need a little bit more sheep. Were you turning people against their will? Me? Finithir? Yes. No, never, 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 never. I practiced on animals. I made animals into bigger animals. I made smaller animals into bigger animals and bigger animals into smaller animals. That's I'm all gonna, I ever did. I'm going to look look over to uh, Daedra. I'm like, is this, is he telling the truth? <laughs> Okay. He's absolutely telling the truth. Okay, I think we know what we must do. We can... Does he have a bounty on his head? Now, wait, wait, wait. Let's just talk about this for a second, Noak says. You're hogtied. Your runes are inert. And I'm getting hungry. What are you hungry for? Your face. <laughs> my face? What does my face look like? Does it it look delicious to you? No, but it's food. Do you like birds? No. You don't like birds. Do you like dragons? Uh. And he whistles, and just as soon as he says that, you actually notice that uh, there's a window sill, and through the window sill actually breaks what looks like a a dragon, but the dragon is made out of beds and bed sheets. Okay. And it crashes into the room. So I'm literally like standing next to this guy, right? You 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 are standing next to him. Yeah, because I was clawing him, right? <laughs> yeah. You yeah. Just got done. So I'm going to put my little claws into his throat and start, just start gripping until he stops it. Like as soon as that dragon busts through, you just, you see the, 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 the claws sink in and the dragon turns to you. Everybody roll initiative really quickly. <laughs> I'll actually set oh. up a, uh, oh, yeah. Oh, here you go. Yeah, you go ahead. Okay, cool. And oh, what the, uh, 
it sent me twice for some reason. The first roll was the 17, though. I, I rolled a yeah. second time, and it was... Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll remove that one. Uh, also, quick shout-out to Dionysus in the chat. He was the one that actually made this map. Oh, really? Yeah. So, quick shout-out to him. It's a gorgeous map made. Mm -hmm. So now, we begin combat with uh... Noak. Uh, I think there is a. Uh... Why am I there twice? I don't know why you're there twice. We'll just we'll delete you twice. How about that? We'll just delete that one and we'll make you. I think there's an that. issue. We we actually can't see the room that's on stream. Just so you know, or at least I can't. You can't see the room. Yeah, I, we're still no. in the we're still in like the old like I'm over here, like I'm on the screen. I'm over here. Where? Uh, where the where the we're right the, outside. Lion, yeah, where the lion skin was. I didn't even know we went into a different room. Oh, okay, I got you. How about this? There we go, that's better. Did it load mm -hmm. up for you? Yep. Yep. It just didn't load the room. It didn't activate the room. Alright, so yeah. <clears throat> so this is the uh, the map that Dion made. Thanks to Dion for uh, making that beautiful, uh, beautiful map for us. Thank you, Dion. You're my boy. Love you. And, uh, so since Noak is technically bound and grasp, um, he, he used his turn to initiate the, the dragon. So Zuzo, you're, you're up. What do you got? Uh, okay. So the dragon is, how far away is the dragon from me? The dragon is about, about 20, 20 feet. feet. Yeah, 20 feet. Okay. Yeah. Um, can I coup de gras a nuke? <laughs> is, is anything near me close enough for me to just savage this kid? So there is nothing that says that you can't, at the current moment, just completely annihilate Noke for whatever reason. You have him bound. You have him uh, by the throat at this moment. There's nothing that says you can't. Uh, okay. So bef since... I'm not going to use any actions. I'm just going to look at uh, Noke and say, uh, just like a super quick conversation. Do you want to die right now? Or do you want to end this and come quietly? What kind of question is that? I am a wizard. <laughs> do you think you can honestly kill me? Okay, something's going on. This guy is not fearing death. Um... Uh, yeah, I'm gonna coup de gras him then if you allow it. Um, I'm going to. I'm gonna go for the turkey. Yeah. I'm just gonna sink my and rip his little his throat out. Let's go for the so, turkey. Since since he is bound, I will treat it like prone. And any attack you make against him has advantage and is automatically a crit. Oh, uh, okay. Instead of doing that, then, if you're saying we're going to do that, um, instead, I'm going to, uh, pick him up, open my mouth, and I'm going to then, uh, Godzilla him. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So I'm going to, I'm gonna be like, open wide, and then open his mouth and just right down his throat. And it's my <laughs> last one of it, so... So, so describe what breath. happens when when no just completely emulsifies from the so throat. So I'm down. actually doing something slightly different. As you can see, I can pick what type of damage. So yeah, I'm going to go inhale, ahead. and it's going to be red like fire, switch to green, and I'm just going to puke acid down his throat real hard. And as it's going <laughs> down his throat, you can see it ripping through his neck. And since his neck gets weaker and weaker, I'm going to rip his head off. Oh, hell yeah. With so as, the, as you see, you, you see uh, Zuzo has him by the throat, and he says, do you wish to die? And he says, do you think you can kill me? And you just see this twinkle in Zuzo's eye as he grabs him by the upper lip, opens his mouth, pukes this acid down his throat, and as you see it start to fill up, he, imag he just... <laughs> And just rips the rest of it off and bites his neck completely off. And Noak, now headless and neckless, slumps into this chair that he was sitting in, completely disoriented and dead. So, 
So you have, uh, what was that, yeah. your, your action or your bonus action? Uh, that was just an action. Um, your action. So you have bonus action and movement. What do you like to do? Uh, I would just want to put myself in between the dragon and my allies. Okay. And then uh, uh, I'm going to do that. And then how close am I to this track? No, okay. 10, 15 feet. Yeah, okay. I'm just going to get myself as close as possible. Yep. And it's uh -huh. it's maybe hovering just kind of right above the... Like, it's not quite above in the air. It's like maybe 5 feet above, six, okay. you know, 10 feet, something like that. So it's, it's kind of hovering, but not quite. I'm going to use one of my uh, key points mm -hmm. to use... Uh, uh, patient defense, and I'm going to uh, end my turn while I'm inside of the dodge action. Okay, yeah, yeah, you can do that for sure. So essentially, instead of, instead of my AC being 16, it is now 20. Now 20? Yeah, for the for turn sure. while, I'm in, while I'm in dodge. Then. Yeah, for sure. Rhea, you're up. What do you want to do? Um, I think I'm just going to take a shot at him with my bow. Okay. So your bow has what sixty? What is the range on it? Uh, one hundred fifty to six hundred feet. Yeah, you're good. Shoot it. So you uh, can right click the the, the wormling. Oh. If it'll allow you to. If not, I can no. I can do it myself. It's fine. Uh. Nine is going to miss. So you uh, you reach back with your bow. You kind of catch one, and as you shoot, it manages to, to, to just slightly dodge out of the way, and uh, your arrow just hits next to the uh, the wall. You have a bonus action and a movement. What would you like to do? Uh. I'll move a little closer. Let's see. I think I've got not what to do. I'll move over. Over to the left of that center column. Mm -hmm. So over here. Hey, don't forget about our bonus dice, guys. Yeah, absolutely. You guys can, can do bonus dice as well. Mm -hmm. You can also move your character wherever you want uh, within uh, your 30 feet. Each square is 5 feet, so every time you, you click it, it's 5 feet. It's not letting me move. Oh, what? Why not? It keeps saying it's not currently my turn. Well, that's weird. It is your turn. Five, 10, yeah, it's definitely your turn. Weird. Yeah, you're good. I can move you there. Is that good? You want to move further? A little bit more, like two squares up. To here. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Yeah, you're good. Is that your turn? All right. Yeah. Adra, what do you got? I am within sixty feet of the bedsheet dragon, right? Absolutely. All right. So I'm gonna look at it and point like, uh, is that a jizz rag? <laughs> and I'm gonna. Use that as my unsettling words. It speaks up and says, It's a wrinkle, not a jizz rag. <laughs> and uh, uh, so you'll have a minus two on his next save. And on the back of that, okay. I'm going to do dissonant whispers. Um, I'm going to upcast it to third level. And I'm going to start singing... Jizz rag, you're made of wizard jizz. Whiz jizz, whiz jizz, it's, it's whiz jizz. It's not a jizz rag. <laughs> it's just a small wrinkle in my sheets. Okay, so is saving throws against uh, 15 wisdom? All right. So we'll make it minus two. 15 uh, wisdom saving throw. Or DC 17, oh. whichever way you want to go for. Yeah, we can do a 17. Oh, yeah, it fails it bigger than shit, for sure. Let's uh, damage him. Go ahead, hit him. Dang. 
23 psychic? He's full of he's full of chess. Oh my gosh. No wonder I'm Wow, he's Justin. really so like like oh my gosh, he's not he has anxiety about this, man. It's bad. He's like okay. feeling himself up like oh! Oh, I just I I love like, it. I'm crusty! I'm crusty! I don't want to be crusty! I love it so much. I'm sorry. <laughs> what the fuck? <sighs> and it, it like as 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 it, it kind of looks at you, it just kind of bounces back and says, I, I, "I told you, it's a it's a wrinkle. It's it's not a gist. <laughs> fuck you. It's just it's just. <laughs> <laughs> is that your turn? Is going yes, that's my turn. I think I did plenty enough. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love it. I love it so much. That's so great. So, why does none of its none of its stuff transferred over for whatever reason? Um, let me make sure that I have everything squared. <laughs> You've got me with the gist rack. That's great. <laughs> mm. So, um. I don't have the uh, the stuff <laughs> the stuff for it, but it it reaches up and it actually as it opens its mouth, it decides to shoot splinters of wood at you, and it's going to use its splinter breath attack. So everyone um, that is in, let me make sure I make the cone correctly. Everyone that is in this twenty foot cone. So I guess it would just be Daedra, or... Oh, yeah, I, I think he would retaliate, and he's like... Oh, <laughs> uh, it would definitely be me, too. I That that little thing is going through me. I mean, uh, yeah, I, I don't know how you guys manage it. I don't know if you do, like, it goes through you or just half of your token. But, yeah. Uh, I guess it's up to you, really. I always do if it's more than half of the token. Okay. Uh, So it would just be Daedra in this, in this regard. So, Daedra, I need you to roll me a dexterity saving throw. Uh, DC... A DC thirteen. All right. Um. Um. Uh, dexterity say saving throw. I will use the bonus die on that. Yeah, absolutely, you can. Nice, nice, good, good use. Okay, and I just click on the D twenty. Oh, just it. yeah. So you can just essentially roll a dexterity saving throw again if you would like. Yeah, you just get a oh. different. You just get a re-roll, essentially. Roll. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You can roll two dice to take the better result. It's just advantage. Mm, okay, okay, okay. It's advantage. Yep. Gotcha. Nice. Oh, there we nice. go. Yeah. So you will take gracefully dodge the chiz rack. On a save. <laughs> Since you saved, you will take half as much as this. So you will Point take five. a total of thirteen damage, or I'm sorry, twelve, right. twelve, twelve. Nice spell damage. As it rears back, I am not a Jizzbrack! And it shoots these splinters at you, and you notice they just... And they hit all over the floor. They manage to hit you kind of uh, in small, minor uh, areas, such as like your, ar uh, your arm or your leg, but it doesn't quite take you uh, down by any chance. Mm -hmm. And that will be its turn. Zuzo, you're up. Okay. So on this... I am going to then I'm gonna go ahead and just make it a melee melee attack against it. Okay. So unarmed strike. Um mm -mm -mm. Uh, that is going to be a twenty. Oh yeah. Yeah, twenty will absolutely hit. I, okay, I just... since I I had a question. Okay. I'm I'm sorry. Oh, I have a, I have a reaction, right? Yes, you do. Okay, because I can have a hellish rebuke on that. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't see why you couldn't. Yeah, um, I, I'm I'm cool with holding with what I'm doing right now. Okay, so no no no, I spell sort of second. Okay, so I'm gonna point out. It's like, jazz ride. Uh. Okay, standard roll, I guess. Gas spell. Uh, so it yes. looks, yeah, so it makes the DC 15 dexterity saving throw. 
Yeah. Okay, we'll see. Wow. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, roll your damage. Wow. Okay. That's pretty good damage. And, uh... It, he's uh, surrounded by hellish flames. Yeah, he's surrounded by hellish flames. Since he is a dragon that is made out of bedding, that will initiate a burn. On uh, on the beginning of his turns, he will take, um, I believe it's a D4? Yeah, 1D4, yeah. Tip. normally at least. Yeah, 1D4 yeah. on the beginning of his turn. So remind me, and every time he takes his turn, he will take a D4 from now on. All right. Nice. Um, Zuzo, yeah, it's your turn, right? Okay, so, yeah, so I hit with the 20, uh, and because I hit, I'm going to then use my flur fury of flurry of blows as well. Mm -hmm. so I'm going to deduct one key point. Yep. So, first attack is, so now I do three attacks. So, first attack is unarmed strike, so damage. So, that's going to be... Uh, it rolled a six, but it's not popping yeah, up. I don't know it should why it's be. Not uh... Huh? That's that's weird. Well, it was a six, six yeah, plus my uh, plus my strength modifier. But it's actually since I'm un since I'm the monk, it should actually be my dexterity. Uh, right, so, so one second. What? Where? I don't know why it's not. Uh... Oh, okay. Cool. Nine. Weird. Okay, so nine damage on the first yep. one. Normal roll. Uh, four damage on the second one. And then last one. And then another nine damage. And then I'm going to use my second attack. I have two attacks per turn. Yep. And on this attack, I'm going to use one of my lucky die. Okay. So I have one left after this. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to essentially just roll with advantage. Yep, go ahead. Okay, give me one second. Uh, attack, manage, and that is going to be an 18 to hit. It's going to hit, for sure. And then another roll. Nice, another 8. So, nice. cha 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 That is beautiful. And all of that, and because, uh, you said fire damage is doing good against mm -hmm. that, I'm actually going to do Tonic Strike and change all those to fire damage. Oh my god. Yep. So for every strike, roll me a D four for fire damage. For every yes, for oh, every strike so you hit four, so far. Yeah, I would I would imagine before you started striking, so you four engulfed D four. your your hands in flames, correct? Yep. 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 So give me a D four for every attack. So what I was doing essentially before I hit, I started like pumping my fist through the uh -huh. air to such a large speed that the friction between the air lit my fists on fire, and then I started punching. Yep. And then that's 4d4 for, for a total of 9 An fire damage on top of everything I already did. damage. That is phenomenal. That's so much fun. And then I'm going to look back to Daedra. I'm going to say thanks for the idea. <laughs> so you see this dragon actually kind of like plop to the floor. And it like it kind of engulfs itself and it raises it up. And you see its wings starting to bat the flames out of itself. And it's just... I'm not a jizz rack! <laughs> it's like beating itself together as it flies back up. And, and it, it, it manages to make itself up like, you know, five feet or so in reaction. Um, Rhea, what do you got? Um, I guess I'm just going to try to hit it with an arrow again. Okay, yeah, for sure. back up here. All right. Dude, I just did I just did 40 damage to that thing in one turn. That was crazy. It has you locked on to Daedra for whatever reason. I cannot That's weird. get today. <laughs> Wait, don't forget about your bonus yeah, die. Yeah, you can bonus die. There's hey. one more bonus oh, die yeah, in the pool. So if you right, uh, yeah, see yeah. if you can right click him as opposed to Daedra and see if it fixes anything. That should fix it, yeah. It should, yeah. I would think so. No, she's still targeting Daedra for whatever reason. Huh. That's weird. Okay. 
Yeah, just go ahead and roll your attack. Oh, uh, maybe you have to right click off of Daedra if you're already yeah, right that might on actually her. be true. Yeah, see if you can right click off Daedra and then right click the the Wormling. Nope. No, still not. Okay, that's Weird. fine. Go ahead and roll it. If you hit Daedra, then it's fine. Oh, 21. 21 is actually going 21? to hit the dragon for sure. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead and click your. Yeah, there you go. Oh, click your damage button in the in the chat there. There we go. Nice. So nine damage. This dragon is is hurting bad. You can see that he's just trying to like more or less he he he's trying to beat the the flames out of himself as opposed to even trying to attack you guys at this point. Um, you've you've initiated so much damage. He actually kind of like fell down to the ground and is actually kind of standing on what would be the pegs of his bed claws. He's not even floating in the air anymore as he's trying to just bat these flames out that arrow shoots by and and it it actually purchases in one of his wings and he kind of like ah as he looks down as he's trying to reach back and and try to bat the wings is that your turn daedra what you got i am gonna take my last bardic inspiration which honestly daedra never uses as bardic inspiration okay <laughs> To add more unsettling words. And say, Aya, I only know one substance that flames as hard as that. Jess. Is he just bad at the Fuck! You! I'm not a jizz rag! Stop it! And, um, and he's just fluxured at this point. He's trying to beat himself like free. Stop so I guess uh, my DC was 15, so plus 7, tw it's 22, 22 yeah. against Dissonant Whispers. Oh, so he has to roll, let's see. Is it another, what is the Dissonant Whispers? It is uh, It's um, Wisdom again? I think it's Wisdom, it is a wisdom again. Yeah. yeah. So another Wisdom saving throw? Mm -hmm. Yes, Wisdom. He rolls a six. Fails for sure. All right. So damage on that. Oh my um, god. That's upcasted. Yes. yes. Twenty three. Oh my god. What? That was twenty three originally. It was twenty three originally. Oh. Oh my god. Seems to have weird lag on whatever. <laughs> That's that's a lot. We're do. I think in like two turns we've done over sixty days. Cause I did forty on my turn. Which just words. Did another twenty something. Again, you guys have no idea how much damage you've actually done, but I'll let you know after. It's 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 great. I'll just go ahead and tell you. Uh, is that your turn, or you wanna you have anything else? Um. Da, 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 da. You know what? I'm gonna keep my reaction in case he hurts me again. Okay. And that's it. All right. So on his turn again, he's he's just sitting there batting himself. And he's I'm not just rag. And he's oh, he takes one d4. At oh, the he start. does take one d4. You are correct. So go ahead and roll your d4. Okay. Four. Three. So he takes three initially. Oh my god. He is is looking rough. He's I'm not just wreck and as he says that he's just spitting the splinters out and uh again he's gonna use that, that splinter uh that splinter breath again. So uh anybody who is in the uh the twenty foot again, so yeah, it's just gonna be danger again. Alright. Uh DC thirteen dexterity for me. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. Nope. So you're gonna take. Let's see. One, two, three. Uh, oh, sorry. So 
So you're going to take 22 what? damage. I'm at zero. Flush. Oh, so you fall unconscious. Yep. So it says, I'm not a Jizrak. And as he says that, he just splinters all this stuff out. And you're just like, you know. And as you say that, you just see. And it hits you in the chest. Yep. <gasps> We're not done. And you fall back as you just kind of lay unconscious for a second. And that's going to be his turn. Zuzo, you're up. Okay. How messed up does this guy look? Dude, he is, like, on the ropes. Like. Okay. I'm going to use my last lucky to give myself advantage again. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to do uh, another unarmed strike. Yep. Oh, big money. Ooh, 14, 14. Just, does that just hit? Just barely misses. Just barely misses. Yep. Damn. Okay, well then I'm going to uh, use my second attack. Yep. Ugh. Damn, oh. a two. Unfortunate. Okay, then. Well, then at the ending on here, I'm going to... So how close do you think... How close is he? Within to you, he, he, he's literally he, five feet. Like he's on the ground, getting ready to try. No, to... no. Like, does he seem pretty, pretty heavily messed up? Oh yeah, like he's he's on death's door. Like he's more concerned about the fact that he's like putting embers out than that than he even gives a shit okay. that you're even there. I I was saving this, and I'm gonna do it. If you read the last little bit, I could spend two key points to do it again. I got two left. <laughs> it has to make a DC 14 dex. Yep. All right. So I'm going to, or but it still takes half damage even if it does. Right. Right. DC 14 so dex to... or half damage if it does. Oh wait, one second. One second. Never mind. I don't think I can use this. Nope, I can't use this right right now. Never mind. I'm unable to use oh. it. So I'm instead. So instead, I'm just going to. Uh, I guess I'll just do nothing on my turn. I'll just put myself in front of right here. Okay. Or actually, no. I'm going to move around to this side. Okay. And then I will, uh, I will end my turn there. All right, Rhea, what do you got? I'm going to. Well, so let me move again. Nope. I want to move to where. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Yep. And I'm going to be stabbed with my swords. Okay. Go ahead. Yes, that's a hey, that's advantage. That, that right? is absolutely advantage. You are flanked right now. That's advantage. <laughs> that's why there. Uh huh. Yes, I'm so happy. I moved there. I'm like, I really hope she gets it. The the DM understood, and the DM didn't prevent. <laughs> it's 15. That's gonna hit. Yeah, roll it. Come on, Ray. Six. Ten. Describe what happens whenever you kill this bed dragon wormling directly in front of you. You had to, That's on fire. I just want you to know you had to hit an exact ten. It had ten health points left. But please tell me what happens whenever you, you hit this wormling. Um, I want to take my sword and just like stab down on him and like pin him to the ground. So as you like, kind of take your rapier and like, you scratch out the the sheets that are uh, that are his wings, and you just kind of you plant right through the center of him. He just kind of, I told you it was a fold and not a chest rag, and he falls down <laughs> to his death. Uh, I'm gonna sprint over and uh, attempt to uh, uh, stabilize Daedra. Yeah, absolutely. Roll me a medicine check. Yep. <laughs> I need you to come over and stabilize Rhea right now. <laughs> She's about to be dead if you don't. Hmm. Rhea, do you assist? Rhea, I need you to come stabilize. I can't move. Oh yeah. So yeah, yeah. we're out of combat, so you guys can move freely. Like I said. Do I just do a ring? Medicine. Yeah, just, just give a, a medicine check. Oh. The medicine, the one you're, you can, you can you're do a medicine skilled. with advantage since uh, Zuzo's here as well. She, she can't use a potion that oh, she yeah, has? Oh yeah, you can use one of your potions if you'd like and just go oh, ahead and oh, yeah, do that. 
Oh yeah, she's one of those. <laughs> oh yeah, she has two whole ass potions she didn't use. Then yeah, I would use my potions. Oh, I just realized I didn't even have enough for that dragon's breath anyways. If for some reason it didn't use my last key point, I only have one. Mm. So, I not use it anyways, even if I, if I did have an attack action. That's yeah, all good. So, yeah, you use the, the potion, right? So 2d4 yep. plus 2. Go ahead and roll 2d4 plus 2, and Daedra, you can have that as your health back. Alright. Daedra, you're back to us, finally! How, ma how much do I get back? I'll just, I'll roll it. 2d4, and then we'll okay. do plus 2. It's being derpy on me. Yeah, yeah, you're good. Seven. You come back with seven health points. Okay. I'm gonna, as soon as I come back up, I'm gonna cast healing words on myself. I said, just but a scratch. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, you got it, you got it. Yes. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, I love yes. it. I'm gonna have to get yeah. into my spell book. Absolutely. Um, healing word. At, at least your arm's not off. Tis but a flesh oh. wound. You've got an arm off. I yeah, think the I'll only one that's it. taken damage this campaign so far is it's Daedra. been Daedra for sure, hundred <laughs> percent. Just because of the way it fell. Uh, did it, it not? Uh, roll? Yeah, it shows you used it, but you can just click the healing button in the chat, oh, okay. and then you can yeah. uh, it'll automatically roll it for you. That's funny. Sheep, nice, another where total. are you, sheep? Oh, twelve. Thank you, man. So you're good. up for a total of nineteen. All right. So where's the sheep? He's he's coward at this point. Like he had he had hid back here in these bookshelves. But he was hogtied. Yeah. Oh yeah, he was hogtied. You are correct. So he's just been laying like he's been hanging out right here. Yeah, we're chilling like, right next to me, insulting the jizzrag. Yeah, insulting the jizzrag dragon. Okay. So before we let you go, payment first. Obviously, the polymorph staff thing is a uh, trash. <laughs> And uh, we will not be taking that. So, uh, 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 the, the, the staff is trash? Do you not see it? And then I'm going to go over there and like point to him. Like, do you, do you see this? Ah, it's, it's, it's definitely in a state. That, that's true. But I can, I can fix it, I promise. Well, what was the agreement? No. Uh, a, a hundred gold pieces? You said two thousand. What? Each. I said two thousand. Oh, that, that's that's correct. I did I did say two thousand. Um, so he's still in fucking zone of throat. Are you uh, are you going to <laughs> no. uh, transfer me back or not? We're 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 kind of reaching our limit here. It's, no. it's like three hours and fifty three minutes now. Two thousand two. I mean, if we transfer, whoa, 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 if we transform him back, he will still be hogtied, right? If you transform, and they can. Yeah, if you transform him back to his original spot, he will be uh, both in his original form, hogtied and naked. Yes. Yes. Okay. Let I'm gonna look at. I'm gonna. He did say he's one of the. He is the greatest wizard of this area. Yes, the greatest. Him wizard. being slightly hogtied is not going to stop him from using words, which are All right. a wizard's best friend. Let's, 2,000 uh, gold each now, or no back to person. And we should um, gag him. Uh, we should probably ask him how to change him back first. Oh, that's right. I know how to change him back. Actually, let's change him back right now. I grab the really messed up polymorph, and I point at him, and I start channeling it. <laughs> you start channeling it? Yeah. Give me a, a, an arcana check. Oh yeah, I know it's not good. I'm pointing <laughs> directly in his face. <laughs> I'm not gonna blast it yet, but I'm gonna start. I'm about to. He's like, wait, 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 wait. Uh, uh, yeah. Are you? Are you still gonna do it? No, I'm waiting. For, I'm waiting for him to answer. And if he doesn't give us our two thousand gold, then yes, I will. <laughs> wait, 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 uh, are you sure? Two two hundred gold? You said. Oh, I think it was 20k now, right? Right? It was 20,000 20 gold? What man do you think I am? Oh my gosh, was it 20k or was it your all of your belongings? <laughs> okay. Do you okay. want to give us the 2,000 now or do you if want to make it 20k? If you turn me back, you can have whatever is in this tower, I promise. Just please turn me back. 
do you do you swear it on the what god do you worship? I swear on on the deity of the nine hells. I'll write it down. Somebody give me a parchment, something. What you swear on Asmodeus? I swear on Asmodeus the god. Okay, he will die if he breaks. So let's do it. So, uh, how do I turn you back? DC Arcana check. I hand this off to someone else. I'm not doing that. <laughs> I'll do it. So you wanted me to do, yeah, do what? Give me an Arcana check. DC 15. Arcana, Arcana, Arcana. I'm not good, but I'm probably oh, wait, the least wait. bad. Wait, how, wait, how good are you? I'm a plus three good. I am plus four good. Okay, you can do it. I'm more of a liar than a caster. <laughs> I'm more like an insulter <laughs> than a caster. So I'm gonna like, <laughs> so I'm gonna like slightly grab it. I'm like, Kurtlemac, give me strength. And I'm gonna like tap it to the sheep's head and roll my arcana. Oh god! <laughs> oh my fucking god. It's just gonna blow up. <laughs> so blow up. Oh <laughs> my god. So he's his head, so it's. <laughs> so describe what happens as you cast this i don't know what happened just, when I just cast describe it. what you do as you cast this so i'm going to take it kind of whip it around a little bit as it barely holds together <laughs> i'm going to touch it to his head and i'm just going to shoot magic into it best i can because i'm not a caster so i barely understand how this works and I'm just going to hope for the fucking best. So as you you tap him, you see this massive ball of light that's just like... And he's just this... Oh, I feel it! I feel it! Ah. And then as the, the room just... You, you kind of like look back, and as you, you get your vision, you look at the chair, and the chair is now full of a purplish-gray pile with bones in it. <laughs> oh no! Oh, oh. <laughs> As he is sit like what once was Finithir shine bright, the wizard turned sheep is now just a ball of mush in this chair. I I'm gonna look at him with my cobalt brain. I'm gonna be like, "You're not a person. This is not even close to a person." <laughs> <laughs> he lied to us. In the very end, he was a pile of garbage. Based on what? our deal, we take everything. He is garbage. He is not even personal. So this base, like makes as much sense as the rest. So, so based on the agreement that that he gave you, you now own everything in this tower. <laughs> yep. Uh, you now you boards. now own it by right. <laughs> uh, if if you do uh, if you do some searching, you do find the fact that there was in fact about ten thousand gold hidden in this room. So you separate 10,000 gold between the, the three of you. And you now own this tower as a, uh, a permanent headquarters for any future adventures that, uh, that you would like to, uh, to do embark on. Okay, I'm going to throw the, 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 the actual jizz out the window. <laughs> <laughs> any any yeah. weird some some sort of related cum rags now go flying out of the the, the tower <laughs> in bulk. Oh wait, I remember. So I look out the window. I'm like, Bess, we own you. Get that out of here. <laughs> yeah. So actually, as you notice, um, the bears themselves they they eventually are, are walking, and they themselves just turn to mush and bone. And you realize that the the wand of Parleymorph, the reason that the issue, the reason that that all of these uh, uh, polymorphed animals were were di disintegrating is because the wand itself was defective, and um, they were actually taking people from the town of Vistula and using them to to experiment on Noak was. <clears throat> and that is going to uh, conclude our adventure for tonight. Um. Yes. I remember everyone the power of words, especially if they're insults. The power of insults. Yes. Uh, <laughs> that absolutely was absolutely does it. So uh, we're gonna go around the room. Uh, first off, uh, Rhea, played by Tattoo Lady. What do you think? What what does what do you think? And what does your character think about the scenario? 
It was fun. It was funny. Um, very messed up ending. <laughs> but overall, I had fun. What does uh, what does Raya think about the scenario? Um, I don't know. She was a little little curious if the pile of goo was sentient. <laughs> Veron, it's been a pleasure having you. This has been fantastic for your first introduction to TTA. We, we really hope that you come back. But uh, what does, uh, first off, what do you think of the scenario? And then what does Deidre think? Oh, I mean, it's the, the pile of silliness I needed at the end of my my week, honestly. And uh, yeah, never let me play a bard. <laughs> Listen... Your your wordplay in this game was top tier, and I appreciate it. I really do. It was fantastic. And imagine, this is my second language. <laughs> That's even better. <laughs> <laughs> what does Daedra think? Oh, you know, another day at the grind, you know. It's just, just insults our way through life. <laughs> and grabs whatever else is left, so. You know, it's it's, I mean, it's... It's different, but not that much, right? I, I have a feeling that Daedra and Zuzo have been, like, partners in crimes for ages. And kind of like, probably Rhea's been, like, a new joiner. <laughs> even, uh, yeah, even though you guys didn't know each other for so long, uh, Zuzo and, and Daedra actually kind of picked up on kind of the nuances of being partners and actually worked well together, I think. <laughs> yes. Uh, that brings us to Dex. What does Dex think of the scenario? What does Zuzo think? Uh, I enjoyed it. It was a good one shot. It was fun. Uh, nothing taken too serious, which is always good. Um, Zuzo pissed that the guy lied about being a person. <laughs> um, Zuzo really thought uh, he wouldn't have, and I don't know why he would lie in the face of Asmodeus like that. Um, but we have big house now. So Zuzo happy, um, but Zuzo is still kind of pissed off, and Zuzo will never love, let this live down. Not only does he not like uh, gnomes anymore, he now hates slimes. <laughs> That's great. I feel like so. so I feel like Zuzo probably thought that he was going to go against his promise to Asmodeus, and thus was turned into a slime. So oh no, yeah, so uh, yeah, um, Finithir was an actual person. Uh, and, no, he and we saw his form. yeah, and when you when you <laughs> brought Asmodeus into it, he was no no longer a person because he swore against a god. Anyway, but yeah, um, I I had a great time running this. I had a, a fun time. Uh, you guys were awesome. Um, I really hope to to see some uh, both Tattoo Lady and and Veron back. Um, this has been awesome. Uh, <laughs> I've had a great time. Uh, I don't know what we have going on this week. Um, Dex, you know what we have going on uh, at any point in time this week? Um, uh, this week, I do not remember exactly what we got going on. I think on this we week. actually do have our Cthulhu game on Sunday. We actually have a uh, a Sunday mid game. Um, I think around two o'clock or something like that on on Sunday. We're playing our Cthulhu. We're continuing our nineteen twenties game. Uh, me and Severian and um, another individual are actually playing. So uh, stay tuned for that. Uh, also, check our Twitter for updates, things like that. And uh, as always, we've we've had a great time. So I uh, hope you guys have had a good time too. Um, we'll see you guys next time. Pieces.